of the ashes The spirits light up the night Looking down the edge of forever So stop me and take my advice Now, from the Untold Radio Network It's Untold Radio AM With Doug and Alan Tychek Hey, Alex. Hey. That was kind of a panic at the end there, wasn't it? Yeah. Technical problems? Always. Yeah. Well, it's not always. It's le- it's when you least want them or expect them is when they happen. Yeah. So, anyhow, it's uh, good evening, everybody. It's, what, uh, May 3rd today? Yeah. May 2023. 30. I even know the year. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I had to look in the corner. Third season of Untold Radio here going on. Um, we are at 2990 subscribers. I so tonight, that. live, we need 10 more. So if Let's you're listening, haven't subscribed because of all these excuses. I don't like keeping track of passwords is one I hear a lot. I don't blame them. Right. Yeah. Isn't there a way they can get the uh, password memorized by their phone or computer? Yeah, yeah. There's a bunch it, of you can you can you do that with a phone? Like you remember can, passwords? You can hit the remember password button. You can. Okay. I didn't know. So tonight we've got uh, Sibella Irwin. Yes. And she is a researcher, an artist, a Bigfoot sketch artist. Does a lot of forensics on. Um, you know, with Bigfoot sketches. And we're going to kind of cover some new ground. I know um, she's been on a lot of other shows, but we're going to cover new ground. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a, an interesting show. I have about 7 million pictures ready Do to you? go. Locked 7 million? Your eyes are blinking a lot. What's going on? Uh, yeah, been, I've been uh, working on the computer all day. My eyes are watery. Oh, yeah. It's me too. It's too bad too because it was what sixty nine and sunny today yeah. and no, no wind for its nice day in the month. I know I got to look out the window. That was cool. Yeah, me too. I did actually. I didn't even get to look out the window. Oh, uh, I beat you then. Tomorrow I'm going to take the day off, sort of, sort nice. of. So every so we were talking about forensic sketches that Sibylla does, but. I always think about this one um, really interesting forensic sketch that you can never forget because it, it happened because a little girl got a heart transplant, right, from a little girl that had been murdered. Okay, it's kind of traumatic. but Whoa. So she got a heart transplant. She kept having these reoccurring dreams over and over and over. I mean, it just didn't end. It was so bad, her mom took her to the doctor. And then the doctor recommends she see a psychiatrist, which she did, this little girl did. The psychiatrist realized these weren't these weren't bad dreams. They were memories that this little girl was having. They were memories. Remember, remember we talked about how memories can be captured in like DNA, right? Yeah. Yeah, we talked well, about Well, this was the story, the rest of the story, well, pretty much... It doesn't take a lot of stories like this to convince me that not only does it get maybe passed on generation to generation, but that memories were actually in the DNA of the heart that this little girl got. And I'm not talking like, um, I'm talking very, very specific memory, very specific. So it was so specific in her dream. She could see this man who murdered her, right? So they've got a forensic sketch artist, very much like Sibylla, drew out, you know, the sketch. The police were absolutely, totally on board with it. Like, what do we have to lose, right? Because they had this other little girl who was an unsolved murderer. Literally, somebody matched so exact. They went and made an arrest. The guy confessed to everything. And the weirdest part of the whole thing is that the little girl remembered a line, the last line that the killer told her before the guy killed her. And this girl remembered that line, and the guy even confessed to that because they just asked him, 
what was the what, what was the last thing that you said to her? What was the last thing that the little girl said to you? And it matched exact. Exactly. So there you go. Yeah, uh, good good Powerful. police. Yeah, good police work really. And the police are just like most people are getting more open minded nowadays to things like that. And I'm sure so, some are more than others. Yeah, it's kind of a wild story. So, um, do you ever go on Marketplace, Alex? No. Facebook Marketplace? No, can't just can't do it. No? I just so, can't do it. Can't do it. Okay, I do, but I've never bought any. No, I shouldn't say that. No, I've actually bought two things on Facebook <laughs> Marketplace, but very well vetted, right? Like, really, I vetted them really well and... You know, one and they were they were both very nearby. Actually, about three things, and they both all went superb. See, that's the opposite for me. I bought I, I bought two motorcycles, and I bought a uh, bicycle. Nice. That was nice. like mint. Very Remember nice. that purple bike I showed you? It's yeah, like a really rare. Thing. Yeah, that one I bought on Facebook. So, what I'm going to talk about tonight doesn't apply to everything. It just means be careful. And it just means there is a lot of crap on Facebook that's overpriced. But there are some deals. You know, there are some deals. So everybody keep that in mind. So <laughs> can I give a warning? Can I give a well, warning? Yes, you sure can. So if you go to a guy's house to buy books and he's insistent on showing you his sword collection. Yes. Leave. <laughs> Get leave out. Immediately. Get out. <laughs> you still have your head. Leave very quickly. Scream yes. and leave. Yes. Right. Leave while you're screaming. You know what I don't get? I'm gonna I want to talk about some listings, but you know what I don't get? There's people that sell something for five bucks, and I'm thinking, so you're having strangers come to your home, right? They, Taking a chance with your life for five they, bucks. And they're gonna case your house. But me and then I thought, well, maybe they're the serial killer. Yeah. The one selling the five dollar yeah. item. I know, but you think you'd, you'd uh, put something more enticing up. <laughs> I'm joking. Up. <laughs> I'm joking. I joke. I'm joking. I don't want to be banned from Facebook. No, Marketplace can be good, and a lot of people do buy it. But there is some, you know, it's a lot of stuff. It's a big garage sale, right? It's a jungle, basically. It is. It's a jungle. And, yes, there are a lot of scams. I'll talk a little bit about those. If you see a $600,000 camper for $300, do not call. Oh, no, I was, uh, you know, and I see, I literally see, or somebody will have everything will be a hundred dollars motorcycle, hundred bucks, new e-bike, hundred bucks, couch, hundred bucks. Everything's a hundred bucks. Watch out for those. Go to the profile, look. And if you see like the same item from multiple cities, like it's in Iowa and it's in Florida at the same time, it's a scam. Yeah, You know, the item cannot be, you know, it can't be repeated a hundred times in a hundred different states. Or he's a wizard. Or, yeah, could be. <laughs> and, and, and you should report those. When you do come across them, report them, right? Yep. Wizard or no wizard. Yeah. Yeah. I found one the other night. Everything was 86 bucks. Why that number? I have no 86. idea. 86. That's you like know, low enough to, it's a deal, but not high enough to where, you know, you're suspicious. Well, what they're hoping, I, I think, is to get a deposit. They're saying, oh, I got another buyer coming over and, you know, give me your credit card number and I'll hold the item for you. And next thing you know, somebody in, you know, Africa or India or a foreign country has got your credit card number and they've already, you know, taken money out. And they're buying flip phones with them. Yeah, whatever. So, um, so that's what I do. But I, I did pick out some deals. Remember, we did our Amazon deals. Yeah, I picked out some interesting listings. I see a lot of things like this. You know, um, it's just it boggles my mind. Like there was a guy that had two hundred and fifty acres for sale, right of land. I'm looking for some land right now. You know, I'd like to just you know, you got to look for years sometimes. So these guys got 250 acres, but the pictures, the only pictures there was of a guy making breakfast. <laughs> and I'm thinking, okay, that's not good marketing. No. Show me, you know, aerial views of the land, Google map, 
you know, blah, 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 blah. I want to see, you know, close. I want to see the trees, the views, you know. I don't want to see a guy making pancakes. I mean, unless they're really good pancakes. Yeah, it's a lot of strange, strange, strange stuff. Man, my chair's all kitty wampus today. Okay. So um, let's see here. Uh, what else? <laughs> so put a picture, photo one, photo one. This is like a typical thing that, you know, you see. And you'll, you'll see the listing. I lost interest. Oh, my God, I wonder why. Where in the world would one start? Look at, look at the mess. I don't know. What do you do? Just turn what? it into scrap. Yeah, so so I see that a lot though with projects like this. You know, they'll buy a motorcycle or a car or whatever, a helicopter, a boat. It's just like, yeah, it's just gutted and in millions of pieces. And it's always, I lost interest. And I'm always like, God, I wonder why you lost interest. I mean, it looks beautiful. What looks beautiful? That, that those bikes. They do? Yeah. Take them down the street. See if you make it. Could a you mile. imagine your wife or your girlfriend or your spouse having these at home in the garage, sitting oh, there yeah. year after year? Pride and joy. When are you gonna get started on them motorcycles? <laughs> well, I, you know, I got to get some. Well, parts. I took it apart. I mean, that's just like horrible. Anyhow, but you know, and these people want. In many cases, more money for these than you can get a really nice one or nice two bikes for. Well, yeah, they put months into it. All right, throw up. So then there's weird stuff, and I see a lot of weird stuff. Throw up photo uh, two. You see a lot of weird stuff, and you go, what in the world am I looking at here? This so a... this thing's called a U-gallop, right? Mm. Just what you need in your house, a U-gallop. Um. You plug it in and you ride it like a horse. Could only imagine. <laughs> um, it seems like we shouldn't be showing this. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's a legit thing. I'm it's sure it's legit. It's it is legit. It's got a saddle, stirrups. It's fine. Okay, okay. so it says. Okay, just listen. <laughs> Says I have a rare collection of horse rider training mach machine oh. for sale or trade. It works great. You can learn to ride a horse. Well, that's not riding a horse. I'm sorry. Sitting in your garage, or your <laughs> living room, with this thing repeating over and over is not riding a horse. How long are you supposed to do this? I don't know. You just sit on. Months? I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I I should have wrote the price down, but I didn't. You know, but that was probably a deal. There you, you go, could, Alex. You think you could like practice and learn how to paint while you're on one of those things? Oh, oh, here's what I like. I might trade for a trailer, 22s, a boat, and a go kart. Okay. So, no. Well, all right. It's <laughs> fine. No, it's no problem. Yeah, well, the picture up. So, this is no, no, no. It's fine. This is, a, <laughs> this is an ad for a, a station wagon, obviously. It's a 72 Chevy. And it, the guy only wants thirty two hundred for this gem. Now maybe it's worth thirty two hundred. Maybe it's worth seven thousand, but not to me. <laughs> maybe I don't want owned it. it. I wouldn't take it for a hundred bucks personally, right? Mm. If it had a hundred, would fifty dollars? I wouldn't take it. What if, if it was twenty five? I wouldn't take it. What if it was John Voigt's old car? Yeah, you mean spelled with an H? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spelled with an H. Okay. Yeah, I remember that. It was funny. I watched that episode <laughs> last last night. Do you believe that? Uh, Did you just come up with that? Yeah, yeah. I might date myself. No, I came up. I watched that last night. I was at the condo when I was watching that. I swear to God. Everyone loves a good That's how I remember because they, they find that. Jerry finds the like driver's license or a receipt, and it's spelled <laughs> with an H. Oh, my God, because John Voight spells it with a J-O-N. Okay. All right. So anyhow, but could you imagine bringing this home on a trailer and your wife comes home? Yeah. How do you explain that to her? Or your, or or if you're a female car resort, your husband comes home. It's not going to sit well, right? That's a sure way to divorce. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe that's the intention. Yeah. 
drive them yep. over the edge. <laughs> yeah. Well, once again, maybe it's worth ten thousand. It's a deal of the century, but not to me. Um. Okay, so or you could save some money with the fine auto, fine automobile that's in picture four. Picture four. See, Alex, this is called timing. See, timing. And well, then I said I described it, and then you put uh, it up. Ah, uh, that's what, nice? that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> timing. Yeah. Work out. Okay. So this you could get for only sixteen hundred dollars. Mm. What am I getting? It looks like it's just a lot of leaves. <laughs> Probably a lot of mouse poop. Did the did the rats come with it? I don't know. It looks like somebody at one point was trying to make a race car. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But only but could really you ma- but could you imagine spending sixteen hundred dollars on this? I'm a car guy. You know, I mean, the guy goes. I wouldn't take it out of there if he did, paid me sixteen hundred. You could just set the money on fire. Yeah, you could, but maybe it's worth it. Once again, I don't know. I'm not an appraiser. Yeah, I just found it, but I see stuff like this, and I'm thinking, what are they thinking? It's what I'm thinking. Okay, but then if you actually go in the search engine and Facebook, and you actually type the word junk in there, you actually come up with some nice stuff. Mm. So there you go. Okay, so put up photo five. How about this Grunman van? Oh, so it looks classic. ready to go at only thirty five hundred dollars. So step in thirty five hundred dollars. I mean, this is a solid investment for you, Alex. Yeah, is this the the last time the Scooby Doo gang was seen? Yeah. Well, no, I don't. You know. Anyhow, you could you could park that in your driveway and really improve your relationship. Well, if you want to get rid of your neighbors, they're sure to move out quick. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> um, so number um, throw up number six. Now this was interesting. It's kind of in the weird category. So this is a bowling coffee table. Mm. Obviously handmade. By a fine craftsman, right? Yeah. Um, but it's funny because in the description it says it's been stored in my garage. And I'm thinking, I wonder why. I mean, they don't make them like they used to. These it also table. says in the ad to bring the trailer. Bring, bring the trailer. Bring the trailer because it's really heavy. Oh, nice. And I'm thinking, no, no, it's been in the garage. It's super heavy. Yeah, but it says I've been storing it in the garage, and I thought, what a great sales pitch that is. Yeah, did he move it in the garage when he got married? I I would imagine that's probably (laughs) the terms of the marriage. But this is the kind of stuff and treasures you can find on Facebook Marketplace. How how much does a beauty like this cost? Oh, you'd be surprised. I wrote it down and I, I erased it. Why did I do that? Thousand bucks. Oh, only, only a, thousand. a thousand. You can own this fine piece of furniture. Yeah. Um, and I think you get the bowling ball <laughs> and the bowling pins. Well, everything's worth more when you've built it yourself. Yeah. Anyhow. Okay. Next, uh, I think we're done with marketplace, right? I hope the guy who built this isn't listening to this show. I hope not. <laughs> we love it. No, once again, it could be worth 2000 to it, the right it, person. It could. No, no. What are you putting that picture up for? I don't know what this is. Don't put that up now. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> oh, my God, Alex. You haven't stared at that computer too long. Okay. Th- throw up. Okay, so there's this guy like in the from the 90s. Yeah. Right? He built all these suits of armor. Okay. Um, to study grizzly bears up close, the whole with the hopes of getting attacked by a grizzly. But then I believe he could never get attacked. He tried or he couldn't. Just never happened. Put up photo um seven. Yep, there you go. This is a real deal. I remember this from way back in the nineties. I think Nat Geo did like a show on him. <laughs> okay, can can I ask a question? Please. Uh, does this suit come with a helmet? I, I would hope. I would hope. Yes, I'm sure it does. Bear's going right for it the comes head. with. 
it comes with everything else. I have no idea what I'm looking at. <laughs> I look at this and I'm thinking Grunman van or this, and I don't know which one I'd want. <laughs> Um, this was not for sale. This was on Reddit, I believe. Yeah, it was on Reddit. But anyhow, so apparently um, he built this, you know, he built, built multiple suits of armor. To fight many bears? Different types, to test them on, you know, grizzly bears. In case we get... But he'd have bears. friends, like, smack them with two-by-fours. Oh, nice. Two-by-fours um, would smack them. The trucks would drive into them, you know, to test them. So apparently this man's fascination with grizzly bears developed in the 1980s after a chance encounter with one uh, at age 20 in uh, in the Caribou region of British Columbia. Why does he From want there, to fight them like they're Godzilla? I don't know. From there, he decided his destiny was to, inv <laughs> to invent a dependable bear repellent spray. Okay, so that's good. That's practical. Can you imagine going camping with this guy? But then he realized he's got to test the spray, I think. Yeah, he's got to test it. So then he's got to build a suit of armor. What if the spray doesn't work? See? Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. So anyhow, but he spent it says, countless hours, hundreds of thousands of dollars over the decades, right? And, and I think the guy's a legend, man. I mean, really, he's a guy after my own heart right here. Yeah. I th Do you think it would uh, hold up against a Bigfoot? Hell no. No. Because <laughs> that's the problem. He's going to go out in the woods. He thinks he's ready to go. And then he runs into a Bigfoot instead of a bear. It could happen. <laughs> so I'd love to interview him. We should try to find him. Yeah. Yeah, we should. The guy's a legend, man. I mean, no doubt. He is a legend. It's cool. Does, what's his name? Um. Well, let's see. I didn't put it in here. It's probably Mark. I can find it. Very, you can no, find see, it very easily. See, it's it's Mark. Oh, there. Well, no, I think that's the model number. Yeah. That's the Mark 8. That's the eighth version of that suit. <laughs> now, how would you pee, though? Is that what that hole is for in the front? It's like a portal in the front? Yeah. The yeah, it's just a little rubber. Are cap. those lamps? Are those lights on his thighs? Yeah, so you, I mean, if you're gonna go out into the woods and fight bears, you want to be able to see. You're you see like you're this. You like this story, don't you? Yeah. I can tell. I mean, it it looks like you know something I'd see in a video game. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next, something kind of related, but Adam sent the uh, photo uh, eight to me. He said, "Doug, I'm gonna get this for Snowgrove." So oh, nice. We'll, so we never miss a shot of Bigfoot. Yeah, just make sure you... Could you, you imagine wearing this king outfit? Oh, my God. Did you take it off when you take a shower? No, hell no. You didn't wear it to bed. Well, you you'd <laughs> wear it while you're being attacked by the grizzly. It protects your face. <laughs> I don't know. How am I supposed to do this? <laughs> you sleep with things? it? You sleep on your back? Yeah, anyhow, Adam was joking, but... He's I don't think he was joking. Well, maybe I, he wasn't. No, maybe I, not. He is a I, tech I, guy too. He's building. A, he's building his own model. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Anyhow, let's jump right into some clips, right? Oh yeah, clips. Alex's favorite part. I love the clips. <laughs> So the sound is good on this clip, clip one. It's a northern Asian pheasant. They, they get all the good birds in Asia, right? They're all beautiful. This is the most coolest bird, and it does the coolest courtship thing. But it reminded me of your Toyota, Alex, this bird. Really? When you, when you start your Toyota, your 1982 Toyota. Got to put the sound up. Got to hear this thing. Crank that baby up. It's it's, no, it's cranked. Not. It's cranked. No, it's not. <laughs> That's as loud as it goes. No, it doesn't. You just don't know how to crank it. Okay, listen. Here it goes. Just like yep. a Toyota. Whoa. That's the air leaking out of your tires. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello? Oh, we lost something. Alex froze. I froze up. Um, satellite went to the ground. Alex, you're going to have to re-log on. So I have no idea. Is it frozen for everybody or can you hear me? I'm going to play a fun video for you guys. Show your support for the Untold Radio Network family of shows and join in on the conversation by using super stickers and super chats on YouTube. Got a question you want answered? Ask it live via a super chat and get real time responses from our shows, knowledgeable hosts and guests. Help keep the Untold Radio Network shows running strong. We need your support. Send your super chats and stickers now. I don't know if it's uh, my connection's totally hooked up. Yeah, you're going to disappear. Um, if you want, um, I can get uh, I can get Sibylla on, and then I'll reset my router. Oh, um, well, uh, you're looking fine now. It seems to be working. Let's just keep going. Okay. All right. We'll just uh, see if we can make it happen. But, yeah, where, where were we? I don't know if we lost everybody. Everybody's no, still there. We're still everyone's there. there. Um, okay. Let me just share my window. That was a weird deal, though. It's never happened. Yeah. Episode 139. That's never happened. All right. Um, so we were sharing the little Toyota bird. Yeah, the Toyota. That sounded like your thing. I was clip one. We're going to go to clip two. All right, so I'm going to pop open Clip 2. Whoa. Clip 2 is, is be a, a really cool. Maybe you've been here. I just thought it was really cool, and I bet you did. It's that restaurant that looks like you're in outer space. Did you go to this? No, I think they opened it right after we left. No, well, it's called Space 220. It's in Disney, Disney yeah, World. Yeah, it's in Epcot. In yep. Yeah, yeah, it looks like you're going up like hundreds of miles. Yeah, Isn't that cool. All right, that's good. I figured you'd like that one. I I would like that. I haven't been to um, Disney World in a long time. I got to get there again. Bring the baby. Bring the baby. <laughs> yeah, I bet you, uh, as me would like it. We got to wait a year or so. Okay, clip three. This is with the weirdest motor home I've ever seen, but it's so cool to me. I thought I want it. He bought it off Facebook Marketplace, no doubt. You think? Um, man, you think you could take that thing on the road? <laughs> sure. I think it needs a bigger engine, like a Chevy 454. But you know, don't you think he bought that on Facebook Marketplace? I think that thing. Oh yeah, and I think that thing's falling apart on the freeway. <laughs> Could be. I just thought it was cool. Yeah, no, it's super cool. Super cool. I liked his train horn too. The train horn was a nice touch. I want to put a train horn on my bicycle. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? That'll sneak up behind some, you know, young people or older people. 
quit peacefully walking in the woods and go up behind him and blow your train horn. <laughs> I'm just joking. I would never do that. Of course not. Okay, um, clip four. Now, this is really interesting because I am literally 99%. This is a real cool piece of footage of a UFO. And I'll explain why I believe it's 99%. It is authentic. Just, you know, but go ahead. And that's if it was filmed in 2003, right? Yeah, that's the problem. Was it filmed? That that's the question. So if it was filmed in 2003, here's why. Because part of his clip, the thing is sideways. Mm. Right? So yep. you'll see it here when he films it. And that's been reported by the government. And I never even knew that up until two years ago, that these things will fly that direction. You see that? Yeah. It's vertical. It's a vertical disc. Which is against, you know, aerodynamics. and But that's what the fighter pilots have been saying. Those discs, they fly in that formation. So I went, oh, okay. Plus, the footage, I went through all of the normal little things, and I believe it's real. Yeah. Right down I mean, to the audio that we can't play because he put music over it. Okay. Next is a just absolutely very cool, rare animal, clip five. Very rare. Look at the majestic beauty of this thing. Moose are amazing to me. Look at the antlers. They're in velvet, and mm -hmm. they're just as white as his uh, fur. Look looks, at the beard. It almost looks CGI. Yeah, everything was white except the inside of his ears. Albinism. Yeah, it's cool. Okay. Um, okay, clip six. We're going to take it to the small world now. Um, I found this and I thought, God, this is such an amazing effect. Put on clip six. Look at the, um, this is, I believe, for a museum or a place called Miniature Wonderland. Look at the water. Now you got to play it again. The clouds, the storm, the mountains, the ships, the ocean. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right, go right, go right away to um, clip seven. I believe this is at the same place. <clears throat> I don't even know where this is. But here's one of the reasons I brought it up. There's a place I was at, and I went to it, and I spent God, the whole day there in Madura Dam, Holland. It's called Madura Dam, Holland. It's it's like 45 minutes from uh, Amsterdam in Holland. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, you've never been to Europe, have you, Alex? No. Yeah, I'll have to take you there someday when I grow up. <clears throat> Anyhow, so I went to Holland, and I spent like the whole day at this place, Madura Dam. Put up that photo. I think it's photo nine. Photo nine. Is that the one I ruined earlier? That's the one you ruined. Yes. Yes. It's okay. But the <clears throat> it's like an entire city in 125 scale, right down to the airplanes, you know, taking off and landing. Everything's moving. Um, people are moving. The boats are going. The trains are going. The cars are all moving i mean it's just amazing you remember yeah. the guy you remember the guy in the mark suit mark suit you know the the grizzly bear fighter oh yeah 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 i want to see him fight a grizzly bear in this little town <laughs> okay film it oh, 4k okay. yeah uh-huh <laughs> yeah sounds good and yeah you're like, all right, enough of that. So Dam, but I recommend, I mean, I would go to Europe just to go see this again. It's that amazing. It, I mean, the detail is incredible. Even from they the gave time. it an $8 million upgrade in 2011. $8 million. How, how big upgrade. is this? Or 8 million euros. Like, oh, it co I mean, it's, it's acres, you know, it covers acres and acres. But it is so pristine. It's just so amazing. Everything's automated. How do they maintain it? I don't know. Very carefully. I don't know. I think it's built really well, you know. It's got it. um, but it's named after Maduro, um, George Maduro. And this thing opened in 1952. And I went there, I'm thinking in the 70s, like 78. Mm. 
I went there a long time ago. 78? Yeah, about 1978 I was there. Oh, no, no, it was way earlier than that. What am I talking about? 73 I was there. 73? Yeah, 1973. So it must be four. much bigger now. <clears throat> no, I don't think they added on. They renovated it. Uh, Probably did more automation. Yeah. Anyhow, it opened in 1952. I recommend anybody go. The most amazing place I've ever been. It's second to maybe Disney World, you know. If I had a choice, Disney World or this, I think I'd pick this, actually. Yeah. So Especially cool. Better than Epcot, for sure. Well, there's a video I did send you, and I don't know. Video A, you wouldn't want to put any sound. Did you get that? Um, I got, uh, yeah, I got. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, 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 you're on the, never mind. I'm talking about Madura Nam. I gave you oh. a video. It's called Video A. Oh, yeah, actually, I do. I do believe I have it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Well, play it just for a second from like nine minutes. Go get right into the the middle of it. You're an okay. independent business. Get honey Just waiting for a commercial. And then you can mute it now. It's because we don't want sound. Just mute. Can you mute the sound? Yeah. And there he disappeared. I'm here. Oh my gosh. Another commercial. <laughs> Nine minutes yeah, in. I didn't know there was no, a commercial. No, no, no. We're good. All right. So this there is we, just some video. Okay. There we go. But you don't realize, actually, it's so realistic looking, you don't realize how realistic it is until you see the people standing there. But it's just, it's just, it goes on forever. I don't know how they don't have kids jumping over and destroying everything. They're in Europe. It's oh, still, okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. The people in Holland were the most friendly, wonderful people ever. You know, I couldn't find a place to stay, I remember. And they just like, oh, this people just like, oh, you can stay with us. And they had a beautiful home. And they kicked their one of their kids out of one of their bedrooms. And they brought me breakfast in bed every day. It was crazy. Crazy nice people. Strangers. That's incredible. Yeah. No, people are way amazing in Holland. But look at this. Cruise ships and... And cars. You can't even comprehend it when you're there, right? Yeah. You can't. Do you see the windmills in the back? And how they built all this stuff, I have no idea. You know. They get those uh, pro modelers in. Yeah, I'd say. Pro modelers. Yeah, it's really cool. But I know a lot of people have never heard of Madura Dam. And uh, it's one of my favorite places. It's amazing. You could easily spend, you know, I only had one day to spend there, but I could have spent four or five. I could see why. Yeah, it's just so fun. So cool. All right. Enough of that. Let's go to, we're almost done here. We're going to get Sabella on here. Uh, clip uh, eight, I guess. This is an amazing. So we've all seen flying foxes, big giant bats, right? But what's amazing about this? I've never seen one fly in slow motion. See all the wings. So start it over and watch the wings snap up in the upward position. Now watch this. So it goes down slow and then they snap, snap, snap. You see that? Yeah, that's a bat. Yeah, yeah, it's a bat. It's like a flying fox, all those big. You know, Malaysian bats or wherever. Yeah, this thing's huge. Yeah, I've got to fix my camera here. I'm going to shut my camera off for a second. Can you take my camera off? Yeah. You're just, you're just going to go. <laughs> Fine, all right, just conduct the show without me. I'll... I'm hanging up. Oh, hold on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. You can yeah. talk. You can talk. These are just fancy squirrels. They're super fancy. Aren't they fancy? I just thought they were fancy squirrels. Oh, I don't even know what kind of squirrels they are. I never looked and I didn't know. 
What's they the, make some pretty cute sounds if you put the volume up. I like the hairdos. Oh, then you're back. I'm back, yeah. See, I'm good. We got one more clip, and then we're going to get her on. Could, they, could there be any more technical issues tonight? We'll, we'll have more. I promise so, you. clip 10 um, is a SpaceX launch, right? Yeah. But the UFOs in it are really kind of cool. And yet, every time they interview Elon Musk, right, he must see this footage. We've seen, I was goes, we've seen no evidence of any, you know, any UFOs or, you know, extraterrestrial life. Well, what in the hell, Elon, is this? So go ahead and play it. The SpaceX launch, and check this out. It looked like there was two UFOs during this launch. Look at this. Okay, guys, okay, guys check this out. On the left-hand side, you're going to see, there it is. There's the first yeah. UFO coming. How crazy is that? What is that thing? Is that a UFO? And then it goes out of, there it goes. And here comes the next one. Check this out. This thing flying the second one's right coming. over, cruises right by. Woohoo! Bird. Okay, I don't know what that is. Are they satellites? Are they UFO? Where did you go? I'm here. I'm just scaring you. Sorry, technical glitch. Yeah, that'll happen. It happens. It's live. It's your fault, Alex. It usually is. Let's be honest. Oh my God! No, I just it just went with the territory all day. It's been crazy. I had a crazy yeah. day too. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Sibylla, right? We're ready. Is she? Yep. She's next she's stage? ready. I bet. I can only imagine. <laughs> it's like, get rid of these guys. Give them the hook. Okay. So Sibylla is um, an amazing researcher. Really is. Um, she's going to tell us some, we're going to go a little deeper into some of her solo stays at a remote cabin in like Tennessee, you know, yes. trying to habituate these things. Um, and there she meets and does sketches for the coolest eyewitnesses. So let's just bring her on and we can get details from her. Go ahead. Hello. There you are. Hello. Hello, hey, guys. Sabina. How are you? Did you enjoy our technical glitches that we had? <laughs> I absolutely enjoy you watching you guys. You're hilarious. It was, it, it was the government that shut us down, right? The conspiracy. Yeah, yeah we're getting too close yeah. to the truth. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Way too close to the truth. You never know. Subscribe while you still can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Way to go. So anyhow, so I did have a chance to talk to Sibylla, and oh my God, some of the stuff she was telling me yesterday. So um, why don't you just give give us a very, very brief, because once again, I know you do a lot of podcasts. You have your own channel, too. Yeah. So we're going to cover stuff. You do. We're going we're gonna to kind of go all over. We're going to give them a taste of Sibylla. They can't get on your, even on your own channel, Sibylla. <laughs> and so, and uh, if I could interrupt, so, and I did what? get all your, all your clips, uh, all your, all, you know, so just uh, feel free to kind of, walk me through you know bringing them up uh yeah as Al you alex needs help sometimes yeah you know? yeah yeah <laughs> yeah sometimes he jumps the gun too <laughs> sometimes he just randomly throws an image up well yeah, actually that's that. fine with me yeah that's yeah. actually fine okay. with me yeah yeah well i met sibylla in um a fa uh zoo book presentation mm. she presented in front of a bunch of scientists and academics and um i'd never seen her work before it was amazing so Anyhow, and then um, Jim Meyer scooped me and got you before I did. Yeah. Even though we had you booked before. Damn it. <laughs> that's true. So Jim. that's why we're going to cover, we're going to kind of, this is like part two of that show, right? It's part two of Jim's show. Yeah. I'm, of the I'm really open to talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about your, let's jump right into your latest crazy case that you're working on. And I did give Alex the link to the video and we can not put the sound on and maybe you can kind of narrate a little bit about this crazy encounter this gentleman had and the, yeah, and the from, sketches. From British Columbia. Yeah. 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 So go ahead yeah. and throw the yeah. video up and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll all stay on camera and you can just kind of talk this whole thing through. 
on what happened. On the yeah, he's gonna pull it up. So this I'm happened in British there. Columbia with um a guy that I, he sounded so sincere to me. Yes. Yeah, he absolutely Super. is. 100% yeah. believable. Yeah. Uh, when I first started working with Mark uh, years ago, um, I took like 18 pages of notes the first time that we visited. Wow. And, you know, when I went to look back when I was doing this, uh, you know, post-production work, every single word was exactly the same. Like nothing changed about his story. Um, the more he trusted me, then the more he went into some of the details but uh, just a phenomenal witness. I mean, that had something so phenomenal happen to him. You know, we as researchers see some of the things that he, you know, talks about. The you know, people see uh, Sasquatch dematerialize or materialize, or you know, we've seen a lot of us have seen eye glow. Um, he actually got to watch a Sasquatch do that, like face to face, like he was only a foot away. You know, there was a glass in between him, but he actually saw that happen as well. Yeah, and there was something weird. Mind speak. Yeah, he experienced was, mind speak. He experienced. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, what, well, explain. You, you, you were talking about Iglo. He witnessed something really interesting. Do you want to describe how what he yes. saw this creature doing it to the Iglo? Yes, it. Um, this creature literally just came, it was, uh, Mark was on the other side of a picture window because his bed was right next to the glass. And this, when when he spotted this this thing, which it was kind of hot trying to hide, but then when he realized he was busted, he stepped right out. And so Mark got to see the full creature. And then this thing came and put its face down right, right in front of, you know, just a foot away from him. And he, he says, you know, in the video that it's it's just his head is two feet wide. Like, it's just a massive creature. And um, they were kind of just staring at each other. And, you know, some people will tell you that you're not really supposed to, you know, lock eyes with them or stare back at them. And you know, he didn't know what he was dealing with. So he just locked eyes with it. And they kind of had a staring contest. And then this thing grimaced and showed its teeth and, you know, made a ugly wow. face and then the next thing he knew it it rolled its eyes up in its head and then the bottom part of the of its eyes he saw like a, a faint glow like a greenish glow yeah I, I never he, asked you what color it was it was green yeah. huh? it was a faint faint green glow and then he got um like a spark and then he got hit and knocked back wow. on the bed like wow. uh i mean you know, it depends on whether you believe in infrasound or not. But, you know, something hit him. Some force hit him and knocked him back on his bed. And that wasn't the first, I mean, that was the first infrasound thing. But then he, it happened again later on in his experience. And Alex, can you was, play just, can we, Sibylla, would you mind if we play a little bit of his audio? Just let him. Oh, no, please do. Go right ahead. He's yeah, such yeah, a credible witness. Yeah, I just we want to hear him a little bit. Until I did. Yeah. And then when I did see him, then he stepped out more in the open and let me, let me see him. And then then he even he even put his head down. He he leaned down in and, and looked in at me in the window. He, he got right down low and he looked in at me. And yeah. I kind of lost it a little bit. I'm looking at this head that's about it looked like it had to be two feet wide. It was just so enormous. Oh my and god. And I'm looking at it and I realize, oh my God, I gotta lean back to to see it off because he's so freaking big. I just gotta to see it off because he's so big and that. And when I did that and I really tried to stare at his face, mm -hmm. he just super quick, he just frowned, just his brow went up. He made a frown really, really quick and his nose wrinkled and he made this frown looking. And I knew that he didn't like that, but I, I didn't even have a second. I just sort of, I'm kind of pulling back a little bit. His eyes uh, lit up. His eyeballs rolled up in his head. 
a creepy thing, just like a you know a science fiction movie. Believe it or not, yeah. His eyes rolled up, um, and out of the whites of his eyes, I could see a line of light that that just went up, and his eyes were lit uh, like a twenty watt light bulb, and it was his light wow. coming out of his eyes. I only seen it for a second, and it just then I was terrified. It oh just it was second because I saw it. And then when he did that, I could feel it. And there was like a little spark appeared in front of him, like in front of his face or eye or whatever. And that was it. I, I got hit with a uh, a bolt of energy. I didn't see any anything, but I felt it. And I just got hit with this wave of energy. That Let's pause it there, Alex. Up, <clears throat> just pause it. So, um, this guy, um, just seemed like he experienced so much. Um, have you ever talked to a witness that had so many details in an encounter? Um, not like this, you know, not like the event that, that he had. And he, you know, to this day, he's still trying to understand why just some of the things that like that the female did he's still trying to understand what why because she, she she almost she like did a little dance like a a pirouette and then she curtsied like i he's still to this day trying to figure out what does it all mean why yeah was this a rite of passage for her or you know that he doesn't know and you know she she kind of kept treating the the female was like oh he likes you you know, he's <laughs> even though he was knocked out on the bed, you know, it, you know, it's cool. Get up, get up. You know, she, he likes you. And but uh, the, the what the what the male Sasquatch did and what it communicated to him. You know, I don't know if you watched the whole thing, but you know, he he says later on the Sasquatch before it disappeared. You know, communicated. You know, like it, we're not you, and you're not. You know, it it it's like not man. You know, like not i'm a, i'm not man we are not man uh yeah just the things that communicated and then why it kind of acted like it was walking off and you know he heard the footsteps and then the next thing he knows it's back at his cabin you know beating really hard on the door and he, he you know he starts to make his way towards the door and he, he never makes it he is, starts hearing is this is this sir i'm sorry to interrupt is this their full-time home no, uh, he was, um, it was an off-grid cabin that his family purchased, and he was, you know, in his early 20s, and he was uh, going to, his plan was to just live there maybe a year or two and just fix it up. Okay. So that was his, he wanted to be, he wanted to be away from the city, and so he was out there all alone, uh, very little contact with anybody else. And um, in part one of his story, he and he really wanted to relay all the things that happened because Sasquatch was not on his radar at all. Yeah. And these coincidence, you know, things started happening. And he he wanted to tell that part of the story because you know he wants other people to know if these things start happening to you, you know, the, the explanation might be, you know, there's a Sasquatch family that it's interacting with you. Um, you know, the gifts that he was given. And that's that's kind of all in part one. Part two is actually the night when, you know, when it kind of hit the fan and all these things happened to him. Just an amazing, amazing uh, man. And it took him a long time, Doug, for him to, you know, feel comfortable telling his right. story. Well, yeah. what, did it, what year did this happen? It was back in the 70s. Wow. I think back so in the he's, late 70s. So he's just kind of coming forward now. For the first time yeah it yeah i mean it's you know when it happened to him uh you know he said to me where was i going to go with this um and he didn't stay very long i think he stayed at the cabin maybe one or two nights and then he he left oh, wow. and he only came back to retrieve some of his things and then that was it um he did discover that his mom had had an experience there um, um and he he was there with his mom and his girlfriend and him and his girlfriend just went for a little walk and they came back to the cabin and the door was locked and his mom was inside uh 
And so he was like, and they were knocking on the door and she wouldn't open the door until finally the girl said, you know, mom, are you okay? What's the matter? And she opened the door and she looks out and she's really angry with Mark. Like, what have you done? What have you done? And he's like, what are you talking about, mom? And apparently when they were gone, the Sasquatch came up to the cabin and he, she would never tell him what it did, but it scared her to death. Like she had a machete or something like she was so terrified. She had locked herself in the cabin and, um, you know, I think they were speaking in kind of his voice. <laughs> so she, she was terrified and they ended up selling the cabin uh, after that. Oh, okay. So we don't, we don't know what's going on there now. <laughs> it's it'd be interesting to contact the current owners, wouldn't it? I, I would love to. Yeah, I would love yeah. to see the place. Yeah, I would love to. And and you know, it makes you wonder if they're still there. The Sasquatch are Gosh. still there. And you know, it's is it's, he it's by phenomenal. any chance? Is he by any chance in chat? In what? Oh, in chat. In chat? Um, I don't He's, know. Somebody's saying I'm still trying to understand what happened. Yeah. Well, so, and so I don't is he. Know if, and he, he's the same way. Like, he's still trying oh. to understand. Oh, well, no, I'm wondering why. if that's him. He's in chat. Oh, the, the oh witness. I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm referring be. to. Yeah. yeah. He goes, it's, it's obviously, if he can respond, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd so be wonderful. Can, yeah. yeah I, I would love. If you're out yeah, there. Can, we can even yeah, get him on, maybe. Oh, he's um, such a wonderful man. You guys would yeah. love him. And he's just so, he's just so open and honest and, um, you just get to spend any time with him and you know he's 100 percent real and like i said he's still trying to understand and make sense of what happened you you, you do him. wonder though um you know with all these weird things that happened that he reported the eye glow disappearing um there were some other things you yeah. just it takes a lot of guts and i'm not you know i'm still very much kind of a flesh and blood you know person um uh but I'm, I'm still open-minded because we live in a crazy world. I've seen some pretty crazy things, too. So I would never judge anybody. If he says he saw it, he probably did. Now, he could be mistaken, possibly. The brain can do some things. But there's probably just as much chance he's just telling it like he saw it. Yeah, I believe that you know? he is. And, yeah. um, and, and you know, a lot of us researchers have seen iGlow. We've just never, I've just never been up close, you know, a foot away from a creature that's doing the eye glow, but I've definitely seen it multiple times. You know, red, oh, glow, okay. red eye glow. Oh, hi, Jay. Yeah. That's Jay Birch. Okay. Now I yes, know. See, I love people always use these handles, and I don't know. I don't have them all memorized. Yeah. But, um, but um, did this guy get emotional at all when you interviewed him? Was oh, there oh absolutely. Sure he did, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I mean, you know, did he, he have like a PTSD condition at all? Yes. Yes, wow. he did for years and years. And, you know, these people back in the 70s, like, where was he going to go? There was no, you know, there wasn't, was the internet? There wasn't even an internet yeah. back in the 70s, was there? No, there wasn't. Yeah. No, where yeah, would you so, go? Where, where, who would you tell? And I think people forget that. You know, I think people um, kind of view some of these stories uh, and they forget that back in the seventies, it was not like that. You know, it wasn't. No, you couldn't just run to the internet and research a vocalization or, you know, mind speak or any of those things. I'm sure, you know, he thought he was losing his mind. In fact, when he woke, you know, the next morning, he was really hoping it was all just a bad dream. And he uh, stayed in his cabin till around one o'clock. And finally, you know, he opened the front door and he. And he looks out and he, he sees that the wood planks that the Sasquatch had been on were bent they, from they the weight. They wow. were bent. And so then he was like, oh, my God, it really this really did happen. Like, I, I can't just write it off. It's just some horrible nightmare. This, this really did happen. You know, and I don't know, but I, I hear that a lot from witnesses that have had really stressful encounters. They're like they, they're just praying that when they wake up the next day that it was just some crazy Mental dream thing. Yes. Well, how did yeah. how did they ever get the courage to look out the dang window? See, that's there where I no, feel. Yeah, well, there I've was no the, curtains. Yeah, oh, there, was there was no, no curtains, curtains on that window. Oh. Yes, and he was sleeping right by it. So, um, you know, he was sleeping right by it. So he just sat up, 
and um, he had heard voices, uh, you know, he had heard someone having a conversation before this started, and then he heard, you know, the wood planks creaking, so he, then he sits up and he looks out, and all he sees at first is, like, kind of a, a misty, uh, swirly kind of things just starting to develop and he lo the longer he watches it then he it becomes more and more into focus and then it looks like hair and it's beautiful hair and he says that you know he's he's in his head he's thinking wow that's that's beautiful and what is that is that a bear and then he gets answered back in his head yes yeah that's it it's a bear <laughs> and he kept saying it's beautiful because the hair he said was absolutely beautiful but he still didn't know what it was and then he's just watching this thing, trying to figure out what it is. And then he he uh, hears this creaking again. And then he literally sticks his face right up to the glass. And that's when he sees part of the thigh, you know, of the male. Mm -hmm. And it had its leg kind of up, like it was kind of trying to hide, you know, that part of itself. And and he then he, you know, kept looking up and up and up. And that's when he sees the face. And then the Sasquatch is like, oh, I guess I'm busted. So it just steps out. Oh my goodness. Um, I can only imagine, I'm just trying to relive, you know, try to imagine what he went through and what he saw. Unknown creatures through thin plate glass, probably plate glass windows back in the 70s. And um, that's just so, I don't know, because I've been at cabins and I've had these things outside throwing rocks and doing things and Banging it's always, on the walls. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, banging on the walls and stuff. And, and so you are so part remote. The, yeah, and you're so, so remote. There's nobody to, there, if you scream, there's yeah. no one to hear you. There's no cell no. phone. There's oh. nothing. You are on your own. 100%. Let's go ahead and come. Let's play a little bit more. Why don't you just like skip ahead a little bit? We don't want to give away the whole thing, but let's skip ahead and just play a little bit more of his audio, if you don't mind, Sibylla. Oh, I don't mind at all. Oh, yeah, great. Like so skip it a little bit, Alex. And shivered, fluttered, like. What, oh, I'm sorry. What did you say? Skip it? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Skip ahead. Let's. Yeah. I don't want to give away her program completely. Squatted down, put his arms out in front of him, and his hands down, like he was meditating or something. I don't know what. And he just stood there, and he didn't move for the longest time. He was just frozen. And for a long time, he was frozen in that position like that. His eyes were just big and round and not moving. I, I don't think he was looking at anything in particular. And what was Barry was, doing when, when this was happening? Was standing, straight, standing straight. I don't think she moved, although I think she might have. <clears throat> at the beginning, I think she was looking up towards the end of that. I think she was looking down when he... When he came up, I think she took her gaze, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I think she's still standing there. And is she standing. facing? Is she? Is she? Are you looking at her profile? Or are you looking at her face on? Or she? Should, she face on? No, not not face on, but not total profile. About a three quarter. Okay. So I'm getting a bit of her back and and uh, quite a bit of the front and about three quarters of her face. So it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somewhere in between there. And um, so that went on for a while. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, this is, they're both of them now are frozen. And what's going to happen next? I, you sure. know, I'm, I, I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I think something's got to go. I mean, um, so she made the first move and the only move there. She what was the first thing she did. She did like that. Uh, like a dance step. She she was sort of hanging on this little tiny branch. And she brought her leg way up in the air, way too high for a human. Brought her leg way up in the air, her knee up near her ear, I think. You know, just way up. Put her head off to the side. And she did, I, I'm going to call it, because I don't know what it is. I'm going to call it a happy dance. She did this little thing. Put her leg up, and then she spun and she put her leg down and lifted the other one, and spun. And she kind of did this leg lifting and spinning thing a few 
a few good ones every time she's taken a step until she's kind of, you know, she's kind of moved away. She's probably 30, 40 feet away now. And then, she, oh, don't forget the other one. She made a move where she looked, this is the only time that she looked at me. Oh, my God. She, uh, she looked at me and did this curtsy thing. The weirdest thing, you know, she just bent down and did this like a curtsy. Uh, wow. I think I almost laughed at the time. I thought, what the hell is that? And where did she learn that move? So weird. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> the, um, <laughs> the fact he describes the leg way up in the, you know, way up on the, on the tree in a flexible position is just so weird. I mean, who can make, you, know, you just kind of wonder how could he even make any of this up? You know what I mean? Yeah. It goes beyond, it goes beyond imagination. And you, yeah. you could see he got a little emotional there when he, he described her. Yeah. When he looked, when she looked at him and he said it was the only time that she really looked at him and you, you saw he had to kind of choke that back. Gosh. What happened? What happened next? I mean, how did this whole thing? I mean, it just continued on. Um, did this happen over, by the way, over numerous days, or was it just no, one night? It was all one night. One yeah. night. It was all in one night. I mean, the now, the part you... one is all the lead up to this. You know, where they were gifting him, and obviously they were paying very close attention to. Uh, and I've experienced this myself, where you know, like whatever you pick up, like say you walk through the forest and you pick up feathers. Or you pick up certain kinds of rocks or whatever, yeah. and they watch what you're interested in. And a lot of times, those things will end up at your, you know, at your doorstep. And that's what happened. He had a, he had p- he picked up a one of those huge uh, dragonflies. You know, those beautiful royal blue dragonflies with huge wings. And he would he had been walking on the trail, and he picked it up, and he was just looking at it. It was beautiful, iridized wings and all that. And and then by by the time he got back to his cabin there was one like left for him and he thought well and you know at, at the door and he thought well wow isn't that that's what a strange coincidence and so you know part one is all about the things that happened that he just didn't you know, he came home one time to his cabin and there was a sitting on the windowsill was another dragonfly and it was perfect wow. you know it wasn't it wasn't knitting wow. any legs or anything is sitting right there and again it's one of those things where he had no point of reference to understand, you know, he just, what an odd coincidence. How did this get in the house? How did it get freeze kind of in a perfectly freeze dried and what, and right on the windowsill and they would leave frogs for him and they would leave, uh, I mean, they, you know, just part one is, is, uh, of course it's not as dramatic as part two is, but part one to me is just as fascinating mm-hmm. because, you know, he, all the things that we hear about and some of the things that we as researchers have experienced, he talks about all of them, you know, having little pine cones thrown at him when he's walking down a pine trail. Cones. Yeah. And having, uh, he was had cleared his driveway of rocks and then some of them come back, you know, and he just, he thought, okay, well, someone's just messing with me. You know, there's some human out that's here that's yeah, just messing around with him. He just didn't know, had no idea what he was dealing with and then think of us back in the 70s well not yeah. you alex <laughs> well, <laughs> gifting, <laughs> gifting hadn't, hadn't been talked about um i mean the only no. way he could probably make some of this up is if he listened to every episode of uh sasquatch you know chronicles for instance and yeah you know and and just confabulated this crazy story but yeah. a person has nothing to gain Oh, absolutely no. not. In fact, it's usually quite the opposite. You know, people everything to lose. Everything to lose, yeah. And, and yeah. even within your own family, sometimes, you know, you lose you have people who've known you all of your life and then suddenly you tell them about what you saw and suddenly your you're crazy your word is questioned, even though yeah. they know your integrity yeah. is a hundred percent. And it's just insane how that happens. Oh. I mean that happens between wives and husbands and you know, it's insane. Yeah, especially if you just have a normal family. There's no paranormal experiences, and everybody's just 
doing their own thing, you know, working and coming home. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. somebody says the Bigfoot walked in front of my car. You know, that's when everybody's going to gang up on them and tease them. And, you know, it's not yeah. good. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to bring that up at the football gang. No, <laughs> no, or at school. It's unfortunate yeah. though. It's unfortunate for these people who it have is. suffered. You have people who like, and I'm sure you guys know some too that have held on to their story for 30 or 40 years. Yeah. yeah when I worked in the um, Sasquatch Museum in Georgia, it the number of people who would come into the museum and they kind of test you. You know, they they're like, um, you don't believe in all of this stuff, do you? And you're like, well, yeah, I do. I've, it's not a belief. I it's a I'm an experiencer. I I've experienced them, and they're like, okay, well, let me tell you my story then, because they're. They, they test you first to see if you're going to make fun of them or, or if you're going to be receptive. And the number of people when I was working in the museum who would say to me, you're, you're the second person in 30 years I've ever even had this yeah. conversation with. And you think of the thousands upon thousands of people out there who still have their stories to tell. And it's, I, I don't know, I just think it's so important that they feel safe to come forward. And that's one of the reasons why I, um, I don't shy away from the, I hate the word woo. Like I hate the, I hate that. Yeah. Um, but I, I'll, you know, I'll the be, super, I'll, sorry to interrupt. I'll be right back guys. Oh, good. Okay. You know, the whole Sorry. supernatural aspect to the, to these beings, I don't shy away from that because I've experienced it myself. You know, I've experienced, and, and you have too, Doug, where there's just, you know, things happen and you're like, wow, that just happened. And I'm wide awake and that thing moved on its own or, you know, the things that happen to us, uh, you know, what do you do with those? I, I just, I go where the evidence leads me. And if that, yeah. if that means that these things are multidimensional and they can do things that we can't, or that we maybe used to be able to do um, and their abilities are, very well developed then i'm gonna go with that because i believe that that's what these people are experiencing because i've experienced some too have you ever considered the fact that the forest might be multi-dimensional and it may Absolutely. not be the creature it may be the forest <laughs> and maybe they just know where you know how yeah, exactly. to uh, yeah. maximize those different uh interdimensional layers i yeah, always I think about all, all the missing people you know, you think about the missing people. Maybe the forest is uh, multi-dimensional. Yeah. Well, you know, or are the you know the rocks seem to be kind of a culprit too. Like big boulders. You know, big boulders uh, come up a lot in uh, David Pilates missing yeah. four one one yeah. books. Yeah, Boulder yeah, yeah. fields and Boulder uh, fields over and over. Yeah. Over and over. Yeah. So, you know, I th I think what we really know about this reality you could fit on a pinhead in reality. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think um, we are. Do, I don't think do we you are have, Do you have the sketches of the female and the male? Did, did you send those to Alex, Sibylla? Uh, no, I did not. Um, oh, okay. Well, we've got the video. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I told him anything he wanted to go pull off, because I didn't know what we were going to talk about, uh, but any of them that he would want to pull off the, you know, my website of witness sketches. This is a, a brand new witness sketch that I literally just finished yesterday, and I'm still working on yeah. the hair. Um, this this young man, well, he's he's a uh, he's a former uh, U.S. Army for like 13 and a half years. Uh, he was in the 101st Airborne, mm -hmm. four tours of duty in Iraq, uh, uh, an IED ended his career. This this man uh, was up in a tree stand you know, 30 feet up in a tree stand. And um, he saw this, this, you know, he, this man. And first he saw like its back, it was down like a, um, like a utility line. And he saw this man sitting there. Well, he didn't know what it was. Um, and so he put his rifle scope on it and he's looking and, you know, it's, it's like, this man have a hair suit on? Is it, does this guy have a, like a death wish? I mean, why in the world would you be out here, you know, deer season with that kind of, you know, hair on? And he's trying to figure out what he's looking at. So he he goes, hey, <laughs> he, he vocalizes and this thing stands straight up. Like it didn't do like a human being. It just, you know, how we put our hands down and stand up. This thing just shot straight up and is trying to find the source of that. Hey, 
and he's looking all around this Sasquatch is looking for him and looking for him and so I mean this guy is he's so brave but he still doesn't understand what it is he's looking at so he goes so he waves to this thing <laughs> and oh, it just makes a beeline like it just makes a beeline for him so uh, it came to Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it didn't take off and go the other direction. It did oh, exactly the opposite. And he said he was, uh, I think he said 150, 200 yards and it covered, like he sees this thing coming and he describes the motion as, you know, how many times have we heard people describe the locomotion of these things just like yeah. gliding, you know, like on skis or something. And he yeah. he sees the locomotion of it and he, he he's like checks his rifle. He looks down, he says, this maybe took all of three or four seconds. He looks down, he ch checks his rifle to be sure that there's actually one in there. And then when he looks up, this thing is 30 feet in front of him. Like it went from, you know, 150, 200 yards to 30, to 30 yards, not, sorry, not feet, but 30 yards in front of him, just that fast, um, which had to, had to have been incredibly shocking, just the ground that it covered in, what, three or four seconds to, to, reload your gun. I mean, he wasn't even loading it. He was just checking to be sure there was one in, you know, in the chamber. And then it uh, Unbelievable. So he's just looking at it and they, they're just having a they're just having like a standoff. And this goes on for 25 20 to 25 minutes. And he, you know, it's start, the sun's gonna, gonna start to go down and he's still up in this tree stand and you know, he would put his he would put his rifle on it and look through the scope. He had to dial it way down. And he said, I could see its eyelashes. He said, and when I whenever I point my rifle at it, it would turn its head and just look at me with one eye. Like he, he didn't get the mind speak thing, but it was like, don't you do that? Like, don't you do it? And he would put the rifle down and then, you know, they were just <laughs> neither of them was like leaving. Of course, he's up 30 feet in a tree stand. Yeah. Um, and so he did that multiple times where I think the thing, maybe the thing would get a little restless. And so he'd put the gun back up on it and he came, uh, he came very close to pulling the trigger. Like very, 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 like he said, I even kind of did a little squeeze on the trigger. He says, but I couldn't do it. He said, this thing is so human in the face that he could not do it. And finally he just puts the, he just puts the gun down and it's like, what do you want? And you just, and then this thing did, and I'm going to try to recreate this. I'm going to try to okay. recreate what he saw. Um, this thing screamed at him, and he said it's like its face became like liquid plastic. Like it's it's when he screamed, its face changed completely, changed shape. Like wow. it came out, like it came out like a foot. Like, I don't know how in the, and he, I mean, I can, can you imagine? And, he, and there's another witness that I'm going to be working with that also saw uh, when this thing screamed at him, its face totally, completely. Like morphed. Yes. Are you and talking yeah, about like the, um, was it the, um, the predator or the alien movie where the jaw jutted out? It was, it, was oh. he describing a physical thing? Yes, or it a, was a. No, it oh. physically, it's, oh. it's face physically Jeez. morphed out. Uh, okay. He said at least 11 or like 12. Like a minutes. muzzle? Can you? Okay, this is important, I, Sibella. I know. Okay. I, I, and I, see, want... I haven't drawn it yet. So I, you know, because like I just started, I just did that facial iteration yesterday. I don't, so. I don't, want, to, I don't want to pass up the opportunity to try to extract the description so people in our audience kind of understand because... Yeah. What so often happens in these podcasts, and this is why they're good, because someone will hear this and go, that's exactly what, you know, and they'll get all like, finally, you know, because yeah. they've been looking for 10 years for somebody else that saw that. Yes. So I'd love to talk about that a little bit more. Um, yeah. How far did his jaw stick out or what? No, you know, he said it's you... the whole face. It wasn't just the jaw. It's like the really? whole face. It's okay. whole face, and it, and of course, he the scream just, you know, just vibrated, you know, his whole body. Like he, you know, you know how you've heard it. Like they just, you feel yeah. it, and uh, but he said the whole face. The, the so he wasn't describing face. like Louis Armstrong cheeks no, blowing on a no. trumpet. 
No, nothing like no, that. No, just that the entire face uh, did this incredible. And, and and when I first when I first heard it, I thought maybe like you said, like maybe just like cheeks puffed out and yeah. uh, and I maybe eyes bulging or something like that. But that's that's not how he described it. And so yeah. I, I okay. will. But what I'm trying to get at did did he specifically tell you? This was not paranormal when I saw it. Was very physical. That's what I'm trying to um, uh, uh, differentiate. He, he he basically feels like his sighting was uh, flesh and blood, and uh, but he but this face thing and what it did with its face that he said I don't know what I, he doesn't know how, how to and and I think that is absolutely how are you gonna, with him. How are you going to draw it, Sibylla? I don't know. I, I I mean, I, I right now I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the. Uh, I just finished the first facial iteration, and then I'm gonna do the body, okay. and then and he is very focused on. You're gonna body. actually he, like show him sketches, and he's gonna say no, a little. The thing was bigger, or the puff out, you know. Um, he will. Um, how how I work with witnesses is I just ask like like with the face that you just saw that I did for him. I ask real detailed questions, and then. Um, I get kind of an image in my head and then I, I do it and then I send it to them, to the witness. And then they tell me what's, you know, what's, what's perfect, what's not perfect, yeah. what to fix, what proportions to change and things like that. So um, next for him will be, I'll put that head on a body and then we'll get the body dimensions and have all the hair and everything, you know, cause um, like when you say forensic, forensic sketches for me, they really are because I, yeah. I ask, you know, the, the, not just color, but the thickness of it. Was it straight? Was it, uh, I mean, just, uh, it's a, it's like a billion questions. Um, and then once I get well, all of those proportions and he tells me that body is exactly what it was, I think probably the next thing we will work on is that face, because I think that is going to be extremely challenging. I mean, how do you draw something that's yeah. face and seen? I don't what, know. Like, and, and that's what I'm going to ask him. Did it change just below the eye level, or was it the whole head? I think it was the, from what he said, it's the whole face. The whole like face. Like the entire face just Even the came forehead. Out. Yeah, that's so the whole weird. The whole thing. And so. Um, well, we're going to have to have you back and <laughs> figure this one out. We did a show just, on. Yeah. Like we did, we did a show on the Bigfoot Purr, right? Well, I even got another letter today from a lady who said, I've got that recorded from way back. Didn't know what to do with it. Now, see, suddenly she's going to send me the recordings. Yeah. I'll get it to David. So what what you do in communicating these things with people's stories, it's important because the only way we're ever going to connect all the dots. Yeah. You know? And, and like a, you said, hopefully other people will hear this you know, yeah. podcast and, and say, like you said, oh, my God, I saw that. But who was going to ever believe me? But I left so it out of my BFRO like, report, you know, because that's oh, something they would yeah. leave it. They would leave that out. See, yes, it yes, absolutely. Fit. Nobody's, you know, and, and Mark said that to me so many times. He's like, "Who's going to believe? Who's going to believe that I saw this creature roll its eyes back in its head and light right. emitted from the bottom of its eyes? Yeah, who's going to believe that? We're, but maybe, wonder, and, and that's so important." Well, it's never been, I've never heard it, that the eyes rolled back. First time yeah. I've ever heard that. Yeah. Me too. You've never heard that? Me too. I've, never I've heard seen that. eye glow. Yeah, I've seen eye glow, but have, you know, the eye yeah, glow has always once. been in the darkness. It's always yeah. been in the darkness. So, uh, yeah. you know, in the pitch black, and then you see these, you know, glowing eyes come up, uh, and nobody's shining a, fly, a flashlight, so it's not reflective. It's obviously, you know, yeah. from an internal glow, which is, sounds utterly impossible but nobody's ever seen that i'm aware of that they i mean do they all do that do they all do that where they roll their eyes back and they admit right. that I, who who knows and then other people have said well i you know and there's other colors you know people have seen green and people have seen yeah. red and i've seen red and i've seen white you know That's so really but it's so important that these witnesses are coming forward yeah. and telling about this like thank thank you michael you know for having the um, bravery and the willingness to come tell us because who knows how many other people might have seen this face 
you know, these things scream and have their face distort, well, then you've got to wonder, okay, so what in the heck is this thing if its face comes out of foot and is distorted? And then he said, as soon as it stopped screaming, it went right back to its original shape. What right heck? back to its original shape? What is that? Yeah, it went I mean, right back he... to the face that it had before it screamed. Oh, God. I mean, did it did it look? So um, what is that? So, did it look more ugly when it? Yeah, did it look ugly? You know, did he say it got really mm -hmm. ugly or mean looking? Or did it, I'm sure did it was absolutely and utterly terrifying. <laughs> I, so I he was know. terrified. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm like you guys. I, oh, oh my gosh, he was so terrified. Uh, and the, the thing, you know, after he threw his, his hands up and he said, what? And then this thing screamed at him. Then it dropped down on all fours and then took off. Oh, really? And then he, yeah. And he watched it, you know, running around in the field. And then he finally, you know, it was getting dark. So he had, he knew he had to get down from his tree stand. So he eventually got down and he starts going back to his truck. And then he's getting paralleled. He's getting followed. So there wasn't just one Sasquatch in the woods. Of course, there, there never is. Mm -hmm. There's always more than one. Yeah. Um, and, he, you know, he thank God he didn't pull the trigger, you know, uh, because he, he definitely wouldn't have made it out of there if he had. Um, a lot of he people did fire think, a warning shot. A lot of people think they're up in a tree stand. They're fooling the Bigfoots. Well, I can, I've got a story. My first encounter happened on a tree stand. But I was in the forest. We were about a quarter mile apart. We had, um, oh, I think it was six of us. We're all a quarter mile apart on tree stands. This Bigfoot went to every one of those tree stands, beat its chest and, and, and blasted us with stink. All of us. Wow. And we all went back and met for lunch. Uh, and every one of us had the same story, which I was like, oh, my God, you know, because I just thought it happened to me. And it was like well, I was there with my cousins and my uncle and my best friend. And everybody was freaked out back at the, uh, you know, we met for would lunch. You, would you have told anybody? Would you have told anybody what had happened to you if someone had not brought it up? I don't even know because it was just first yeah. it was the smell and then it was a big powerful chest beat. People go, "Well, you heard a grouse?" No, I was a grouse hunter. I didn't hear a grouse. I know what a grouse sounds like. This sounded, yeah, it could have been a grouse if it was a thousand pounds. Then it could have been a grouse if it was a thousand pounds. <laughs> and we were in the north woods, way up by the Canadian border. You know, we're in the right area, tons of sightings up there. And I, the Bigfoot was the last thing in my mind. I was trying to get a big deer, you know, that's what I was there for. So when you're hunting, you're not thinking Bigfoot. No. You know, you're, you're not, not fooling not. a Bigfoot because this thing went there to everybody's tree stand just to say, oh, you guys are all idiots. You know, wherever one of you are, you're all in my territory <laughs> and you're all a bunch of idiots and I'm going to let you all know, you know. And so, um, yeah, wow. people, I've, I've had people call me, well, all you got to do to get film of a Bigfoot is just go up in a tree stand and you'll get, you know, all the footage you want. No, it doesn't work that way. No, it's not that, that easy. They know you're up there. They no, know if when it you're was that easy, room. I mean, we, yeah, if it was that easy, we'd have all kinds of, um, Tons we'd of have footage. all kinds of footage. Yeah, and if these Let's were see. just uh, flesh and blood, you know, uh, Apis creatures, we'd have all kinds yeah. of footage of them too. They'd be in all yeah. the trail cams. They'd be everywhere. So the fact that we that we have such a difficult time documenting mm -hmm. them uh, it just speaks volumes. I don't, and I, yeah. I just can't well, understand. Well, apparently, apparently, none of these big uh, foot researchers want to go on a tree stand. That's the only thing holding mm -hmm. us back. <laughs> <laughs> Case yeah. closed. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and you know, and all the all the places we have hid, and ways we have hid cameras, know. you know, flower pots, and ice chests, and grills, and dog houses, and you know, stumps, and all the things. They always bust them. I guess. Well, they here, seem to. Here. Yeah, you're right. They do yeah. seem to. Yeah. But I'm going to keep trying. You know, I'm not going <laughs> to give up. You never know, because someone's going to have a bad day, just like me and Alex just had a bad day today. Just technical problems. Yeah. One day they're going to be. One day they're going to stub their toe on a rock, and they're going to go, "Damn it, how oh, that hurts!" And they're not going to see that dang camera. Yeah, you know, or maybe they'll be distracted. Yeah, maybe some distraction. Something. 
Yeah. It'll be mating season. It'll be some perfect <laughs> storm, you know? Mating season. That'll get you every time. Yeah, yeah mating season. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, okay. Or, um, digressing. Okay, so... <laughs> So how long was this thing at the bottom of the deer stand? How many minutes? Total? 25 minutes, something like 25 minutes. Yeah. So he really got a, he really had a, a thing going on I, with this Bigfoot. He really got a good look. Gosh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So cool. What, so what is the weirdest, um, besides Mark up in British Columbia, what is the, and, and this guy <laughs> on the deer stand, what's the other weirdest one that you've ever heard? That just doesn't fit. That doesn't fit the mold. Is there any other ones? That, is it like an outlier? You know, an outlier. Yeah. Uh, was it the one? Was, blue eyed? That was that was a weird one. The blue eyed creature. Oh, the blue eyed. Oh, yeah, that was beautiful. Um, it was such a beautiful face. Yeah. Do you um, want to put that up, Alex? The blue. The blue face. No, no, blue eyed. The blue eyed face. I think it's face. the. Yeah, it's a, I don't know if I, I didn't send it to you. You didn't send that? Yeah. Um, is oh. that on your website? I could pull up your website. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's and it, it's like the third episode that I did, and that's from Massachusetts. And, you know, the interesting thing is I did another witness sketch when I was working at the museum for yeah. a woman in Massachusetts who, as a child, this uh, her mom uh, had to open up the kitchen window because she'd burnt something in, uh, you know, in the oven. So that she wanted the smoke out, and this little girl was um, at a desk that was right at the window, and she was doing her coloring book, and she dropped a crayon. She dropped a crayon, and she went underneath the desk to get the crayon, and when she came back up, this Sasquatch, it was a white Sasquatch with crystal blue eyes, was looking right in the window at her. So that's two Sasquatches from Massachusetts with blue eyes, which is amazing. That's interesting. Alex, you can quit now. <laughs> well, we, you, can, you, can, you can put them up, but let's just put one up at a time and leave it there and so we can get some story behind it. Um, What's the story on this one, yeah, that, Stella? That's a cool um, that's Mr. I love this one. That's Mr. Dave Groves. Yeah, that's from uh, Pennsylvania, the Allegheny National Forest. Um, and this guy was absolutely just curious. Like he, you see, he has that kind of that curious look. This was, uh, this was a gentleman who was riding on his ATV, uh, with a friend and the friend got kind of behind him. So he pulled over and was waiting for the friend to catch up. And, uh, this thing was off to his right and started throwing little, little pebbles and stuff at his ATV. And when Dave turned, you know, he finally sees this pebble hit the, you know, his ATV and he looks to the right. And this thing that had been kind of looked kind of down like a stump actually stood straight up and they just observed each other. He said it was obviously curious about me. He said that he didn't, he wasn't really afraid. It was, they just kind of looked at each other. They were just observing each other. And then this, this thing, um, took like three steps back into the woods and was gone that's such a i don't know something about that picture that some of the some of the pictures the sketches that you do and some of some that other people do they just get to you you know there's just something yeah. so realistic or just i don't know what it is you captured something with this so it's compelling well you know magical. and that's what he kept saying just how the eyes were. I mean, it's just a, the, the, yeah. you know, the people who get to see their faces up close, it's just so compelling. And, yeah. you know, I just, I want, uh, you can you know, see the intelligence. Yes. And, you know, and, and you, you know, can. a witness can try to describe in like a thousand words to you, you know, try to say, Doug, it had these deep set, uh, intelligent, sentient eyes and, you know, uh, and try to use a thousand words to describe, but then you, this visual, it's like, oh, I get it. Like, look at the, look at the beauty and depth of this. This is a, you know, this is a, this is a beautiful being. Yeah. Well, it looks extremely it, intelligent. It doesn't yeah. look dangerous at all. I mean, no. it just looks like mm -hmm. it would you'd be curious, but it would, you know, if I, if I ran into a creature like that, I wouldn't be freaked out. I'd be like, oh, it's all cool. But if yeah. I ran into one that had a two foot wide face, 
I'd be intimidated by that immense size. Um, nice. This thing, this one wasn't terribly huge. Uh, I think it was probably seven or eight feet. Oh, only, probably only, eight. only, only. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, uh, Mark's the the witness we were talking about that had this one on his porch. It was at least ten feet. Gosh, that's insane. I know. Yeah, because he that's, saw it. You know, yeah. he sees it. He sees it later on by the tree. And when he measures, you know, where this thing was by the tree, it was at least ten foot. And the little female Gosh. was at least seven. Yeah. So this is, you know. I mean, I think the average Sasquatch is probably eight feet, right? That's what y'all hear the most. Yeah. I'm looking at this photo. Do you ever try to envision these without hair? Do you ever do that? Uh, um, take one of your sketches and then remove the hair. You ever done that? Oh, well, they kind of start should... without hair, so I yeah. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I do kind of see them. Yeah, and do, then because I, I have the hair. You save? Do you save those versions then without hair? Yes, I do. I, yes, I do. You think so? Do you, um, well, it's kind I of fascinating. I got to get you back to share uh, those. <laughs> it's kind of well, fascinating because, to watch the iterations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you see a Bigfoot without hair, you start seeing um, at the you, you see oh you see the native traits, you can see Asian traits sometimes. Um, it's quite interesting, you know. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of value. I think you should really get those out to the public, kind of like this is what this creature's facial structure is and what it would look like without mm -hmm. hair. That would be, I think that would be fascinating for people. Oh, that's, the, yeah, that could do a, I could do a, like a YouTube show that just shows the, like the iterations from start to finish. Yeah, that would be yeah, a great idea. Doug. I would love yeah. to see this thing just um, more of with uh you know, human type uh, haircut even would be kind of fun. You know what I mean? You would not want to hang out with me. I'm just like, <laughs> be like brain diarrhea. You know, I drive no, you crazy. No, I actually, I think it. I think. Uh, I think I'll do it. I do think it would be fascinating because you know, when people have taken. Yeah, put a faux hawk on this guy. Get to get all this. <laughs> you know, shave them all off and put a faux hawk and say, and some clothing on him and go. Well, you know, would you even? Would you even pay attention to this guy if he was in a bar or in a bowling alley? You know, that's yeah. that's what's interesting. Um, yes. To and me, a lot of I took. I, I'm working with them. They'll say that. They'll say uh, this. This person. Uh, there was a man I worked with in Washington State who saw yeah. a female, and he told me he said this female was stunning, like stunningly yeah. beautiful. Like she had a beautiful face. She looked like this. Uh, you know, a beautiful, beautiful black woman. Like her skin was black and her, he said that her features were so finely chiseled and she was beautiful. The only difference was, you know, she's seven and a half feet tall and covered in hair. He said, but she, her face was extraordinarily beautiful. Yeah. So John, John Ayers goes, Doug wants to uh, shave a Wookiee. <laughs> so that was some witty people in our audience. I love nice. it. And Jennifer goes, I, this is, I'm going off the deep end. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> It's not me. It's not me this time. No, no. That's just the way. They, hey, you know, because you learn. Mm -hmm. There's just so much to learn from these creatures. We know nothing. Yeah. And so I would love to see all of these without hair. You know the, because you're gonna go. Oh, in fact, I think um, when I did Patty, I had a, an artist do do Patty without hair. It was the first time that had been done. And mm -hmm. I put it in Mysterious Encounters, and then um, Chris Murphy published it in Meet the Sasquatch. And that got more scientific notoriety from scientists seeing that. Got their attention more than yeah. a hairy, you know, creature in the woods. Because suddenly yeah. it made sense. They're like, oh, my God, maybe these are biological. Or, you know, maybe they yeah. are of Asian descent or native yeah. descent or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. right. So. And, and some of the witnesses, will, like Mark uh, from British Columbia, when I first started working with him, I always ask, okay, well, what um, can you describe, you know, the face? And he said it looked like an ancient human. Yeah. 
So when I started researching, you know, so I just go to the internet and I start looking at the bone structure of ancient humans. Mm -hmm. And that's what I use to okay. start, you know, to start building his sketches. I go look at, cause he said the cheekbones were just massive, massive cheekbones and, you know, just yeah. very strong brow ridge. Patty so, had massive cheekbones too. Yeah. Have you, have you done a rendition of Patty? No. You, you should. It. It'd be, um, Really interesting. You should do oh, that. It would be, it would be I, I'd love to work with Bob Gimlin while he's still with us and yeah, and do, yeah, yeah. You know, from what his, from what he recalls, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, thank you, Steve. Um, so okay, let's go to another picture, Alex. Okay. Oh, I love Steve Wolf. Hello, Steve Wolf. Gosh, it's so yeah. cool. I and you know, this, this witness, I'll, I'll never forget, this witness is from Virginia, and he said to me, he said, Sibylla, do you remember, like, in the 70s, the trolls, the troll dolls? And I said, well, yeah, we all had them. He goes, that's yeah. what this face reminded me of. It reminded oh, me of those little, sense. those little dolls with the wild hair. And this, so I this... literally, when, when witness tells me that, then I literally go and look at the troll dial and I'm like, okay. And I, I use that. Like it's a springboard. Yeah. yeah. I have a friend that looks just like this. I swear. <laughs> he might be a secret Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. And if, to all my friends out there, I'm never going to admit who it is. <laughs> Ever. And this I forgot was a, a few very, ideas. Uh, this was a very, Sorry. Uh, uh, this was a beautiful encounter. This, this thing, uh, this was a hunter. And this guy was just, peeking around a tree, watching, you know, looking at him. It was just curious. It was a very uh, peaceful encounter. It had a very mm -hmm. peaceful look, just curious. Look yeah. at the size of the eyes. You know, the eyes are just yeah. massive round globes, no whites in the eyes, which I hear a lot. Have you heard people describe um, when they see a Bigfoot from far away, sometimes they, they'll say it looked like it had sunglasses on. I sure have, yeah. You have heard, I hear that, that a okay. lot. I hear that a lot. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the shape of the brow ridge and the way the shadow falls on the face. Right. Yep. Yeah. Depends on the angle of the sun. Yeah. The other thing you had mentioned, um, you had mentioned that last one was uh, an encounter on an ATV. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I have a comment mm -hmm. on that because I know of so many ATV encounters, and I mm -hmm. thought to myself, I have an ATV, and I was listening to it one day. And it's a four-stroke motor. And I was thinking, I wonder if they put out infrasound because four strokes, they call them thumpers. And they put out oh. a very unique vibration. And I thought, you know, I've heard 50 encounters, probably 50 of them, just me, uh, just people with on ATVs. And I'm like, that just doesn't make sense to me. It's too many. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just wondered if there's a... Uh, some kind of frequency that comes off them. That's a really so, good question. There's one time. in that gallery, uh, Alex, of a of a face that's kind of grimacing, and that was a guy uh, on an ATV. No, it's go back. Maybe go back up. Maybe go back up. Um, this is where Alex. Yeah, he ruins up. all of the photos. No, he's fine. I'm just. Oh, I'm guy. just giving up. Um, that one right there, that you, there. yes, that mm -hmm. was a guy on an ATV. Yeah, that was a guy on an ATV. Now this thing's look at the scar on this thing's face. Ooh. It has a huge scar, like right there on the right hand yeah. side to us. Like look at that scar. It starts in the cheekbone and went all the way up into the forehead, like a, either a bear or a cougar or yeah. something. Do this was a, this man. Um. This is in Ontario. Mm. Um, this this man, when I asked him uh, what, you know, because I always ask, so what do you think this thing was? Because he, he was like literally face to face with this thing. Okay, so he's driving his ATV on, on, his, on some property and he comes around the corner and he sees out of the, his peripheral vision, there are two creatures and this one is running runs right up to him and grabs his handlebars like he's going 20 probably 25 miles an hour this thing gets in front of him and grabs his handlebars and, and digs its heel in and stops wow. the atv and this guy didn't stop like he his face went, went face to face with this thing and then he went over like he was thrown 
off the ATV because this thing stopped it so fast. Wow. And I asked That's... him, I said, what, uh, what do you think this thing is? And it was huge. It was, wasn't just a little guy either. It was, I think, nine or 10 feet. And he said, this was a giant. He said, he said, Sibylla, this was like a biblical giant. And that's what he believes. Like his belief is that it was a giant, like from the days of old kind of giant. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. He said, this was, there was nothing about its face that was apish. Yeah, definitely. You see whites in his eyes, and yeah, whites in his eyes, and look at his teeth. I mean, this look at his nose. Everything, except that it was just a massive hair-colored creature. Very human teeth. Yes. Extremely. Yeah. yeah. Somebody I'm said it reminds them of William Defoe. I'm like, nice. You <laughs> 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 uh, guys. Hey. You have to forgive our chat room. It's it's a little, no. we, we, we have the wittiest audience ever. Yeah, they're no, just, I love they're just full of, In fact, some of these people, I, I, I have to get my turn my camera off because I'm I'm ready to start losing it, laughing. <laughs> laughing, yeah. yeah. So I'm, like, I'm shutting my camera laughing. off because I can't take it. I'm cracking up. I'm trying to think of something bad so I don't laugh. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, Alex, so go, I get, go I've been go giggling right lately. Go right oh. up above that. Do you see the one with, yes, with the red eyes? Uh, no, just to the left, that one. That one. That one's spooky. Yeah. And that's in the daytime. Like, he saw the, the red daytime. eyes in the daytime. Like, and this man well, was fishing. This was in uh, Oklahoma, southeastern Oklahoma. He's fishing. Uh, and he'd been there a few days. And, he'd been, you know, he would get up early in the morning. They were tent camping. His wife was uh, several months pregnant. And they, he just needed some time away. So they're tent camping. She's still asleep. And in the morning, he would get up, you know, early and go mm -hmm. down by the river and catch breakfast. This was the third day. And he, uh, you know how it is when you're fishing, when you're fishing and you're fishing around a lake and there's trees and brush and stuff. Well, he went to cast and he was caught on something. And when he went to look back, uh, you know, to see what he was caught on, the lure was stuck in this thing's chest. Oh, gee. It was standing literally right behind him, and he said his the, his first thought. Well, and he's look he's this thing is so big he's he's like standing at its navel, and he looks up into this face, and it's you know it's it's angry, <laughs> and he's yeah, and his see. first thought was I'm sorry, you know he has this the hook and everything is stuck in this guy its peck, you know, and it's like oh I'm sorry, and then this thing uh, shows its teeth like that and starts growling at him. And then he passes out. So he, he he said he started feeling, he could feel the growl through his body and he started vibrating. And then he he was you know, he was done. So I think once again, here's another person who got hit with infrasound so hard that it, you know, it knocked him out. And he, when he woke up, he, this, it was gone. His fishing poles were all broken into pieces. His tackle box was, you know, utterly smashed. And there were some footprints there, and uh, he destroyed the footprints. He put all of his gear that was broken up in the trash, and then he, he just went back to the tent and sat there waiting for his wife to wake up. And then when she did, he he just said, I'm not feeling good, and I want to go home. And he didn't tell her. Like, he didn't tell her what had happened. I've noticed um, um, quite a few drawings don't have any of the hair that we Humans have a lot of hair under the nose in the form of a mustache. Yeah. And that's I always ask those questions. Yeah. 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 I always ask those questions. So some have, some, some I've drawn have uh, goatees yeah. and some yeah. have uh, just a whole lot of hair. Um, and then some, like the, the man I'm working with from Mississippi, the, the, the brand new one, like zero hair on the face, not even on its chin. More Native American. There's the blue-eyed one. Yeah, just a fascinating. This man so what's, has what's, such an incredible encounter. And this, this happened this, in this Sasquatch. Um, out east. Yeah, that's in Massachusetts. Um, okay. And this Sasquatch, this Sasquatch, um, like uh, Ernie, ended up just in the middle of a hunt. This thing, this guy was down at the base of the tree. You see, like the tree behind him. This guy was at the base of this tree, 
and there was this ruckus going on to the right where there's a, a rock wall and apparently there was another sasquatch over there that had that had already wrestled down the deer but when ernie ernie didn't really you know he was well, he sees this thing at the base of the tree and it starts to get up and he doesn't he's like is that a is that a deer is that a bear is that a man and then he, then he thinks it's a man and the then he's if this deer come busting over the rock wall he's going to be in a crossfire so he shuffles and makes a noise and then this guy turns and looks at him and the shock on his face like the expression that that ernie saw this thing make the, the shock like how in the world did you get here without me seeing you and it, it was uh this thing kind of expressed like an awe and respect, like, 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 dude. And uh, Ernie kind of had his gun on him. So this thing, the first thing this thing does is like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, the first thing this thing does, this shows his in this intelligence. This, this thing, and Ernie said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, this thing knew how to manage me. Like it, it managed my fear. Um, it did the whoa, whoa, whoa thing. And then it started doing a sign language to him. Like it, it, um, it, it touched its heart, you know, and it pointed to him, it touched his own heart. He pointed to Ernie's heart. Like, you know, I don't know if it's saying brother, we're one, you know, it would be, I'd be guessing. And, and he doesn't know for sure, but it was obviously as it was walking towards him, it was trying to communicate with him with sign language and, and doing a very you know good job because Ernie put down his gun and this thing literally walked to within feet of him. It's an incredible experience. And Ernie got to see it, you know, it, it whooped, it whistled to the other one. Um, and before it left Ernie, it, it, it nodded at him like, you know, kudos to you, sir. <laughs> And then it turned around and walked off, you know, just casually. Yeah. And then it met up with the other one and Ernie heard those other two talking. Like he could hear, he, he couldn't understand, of course, what they were saying, but it, they were talking. And then the big one turned and pointed to Ernie. And then the, the other one that met up with him had that same shock look like, oh my God. And then the this one pointed to itself and the direction it was going and pointed to the little one and the direction that he wanted it to go. And then they left incredible just an incredible yeah, experience crazy. somebody had mentioned um <clears throat> they wanted you to tell the rest of the story after the handlebars were grabbed on the atv the guy flew off his atv crashed then what yeah. how did the story end for the encounter uh his wife uh was close enough that she heard the atv you know suddenly die the motor die and so she you know it scared her because she you know that's an alarming thing when you're when your loved one is moving and then suddenly not moving. So she started running and then she found him and I think he was unconscious oh, um, and you know kind of beat up. She didn't see the Sasquatch. Of course not. Yeah, but he was okay. But he he got mm. you know cut up and I think he had a mild concussion. Yeah. And I, I worked with another witness in Montana um, who had Sasquatch on his property. And uh, there was a spring that he would visit uh, when he was riding out on his ATV just to check to be sure it was still running and everything. And one day, this Sasquatch, this, I guess, I don't know, it was territorial, li literally, and he's on his ATV. This thing lifts up this, the ATV and throws it, like, and tumbles him up in the air, like, throws him off. And fortunately, the ATV landed back on its wheels. And he wasn't terribly hurt, but Jeez. I know. So, I mean, the strength it would take to toss an ATV up in the yeah. air to the point where it flipped and came down on its wheels. Holy cow. Well, I should. Yeah. When I get, I'm going to get some infrasound equipment for Legimate Science too. And I'm going to test four strokes to see what kind of infrasound comes off those because there's just so many encounters because, you know, Generally, where places people ride ATVs, they're not in the middle middle of the wilderness for sure. Um, there's usually a lot of ATV traffic going on, but it seems to really anger them. The ATVs do. Yeah. And almost every story, um, not everyone, but many of them, the the, the the Bigfoot acted angry. So. Yeah, and he thinks the he thinks that there was a little one, and that 
the okay. Sasquatch was afraid it was going to hit his little one. Oh, okay. All right, let's put up another picture, Alex. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this one's interesting because it's so human looking. Very, very yeah. Native And that's what American. she said. That's what she said. She said this looked, this looked entirely 100% human, except yeah. here covered. And this was uh, California, kind of Southern uh, California. And um, she was only 14 years old when this happened. Um, and this thing literally just came, they were on a, one of those winding you know, roads, and this thing just came right out of the hills. And Gosh. it was so close to the front of their car that she couldn't, she didn't even see like the bottom feet. Like it, they almost hit it. And it, it you know, it kind of got an angry, had an angry look on its face. Um, you know, how they kind of get that look like they're angry that you saw them mm -hmm. or they're just angry. You know, they get that kind of disgusted, you're a disgusting human being. <laughs> But this thing just stepped literally right in front of their car. Wow. And, and multiple people, I think there were four people in the car, and they all saw it. And she, you know, just after they saw this, she demanded to be taken home. Um, it terrified her so much. Well, when you see this, it makes sense because it looks so Native American. It just makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, um, God, it's amazing. Look at the cheekbones. Yeah. That's one thing that they all seem to have in common are high cheekbones. Mm -hmm. And there is a little hair. See, there is a little bit of hair underneath the nose. Yep. yep. And then, of course, the, of course, the body then is totally hairy. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, some people have said, you know, they see uh, the color of the skin through the chest. You know, they'll see some hair through the, some chest through the hair. It's kind of a gray color, most of them will describe. Let's yeah. let's move then, on. That scary so, one, you know, there's the one right next to that. Yes. Gosh, this poor woman. Yeah, this, this is this, totally different. I mean, this is scary. the opposite of what we just looked at. Yeah. yeah. It is. And this poor woman, uh, Doug, she still has PTSD from this experience and she's uh in her fifties now, but she no was uh, camping. Why. Yeah, she was camping in uh in fact her and her dad had just gotten the Yellowstone they were just setting up their camp and uh, they were, she was going to cook them some dinner. She had just started the fire and uh, this huge boulder came flying over her head and hit behind her. And when she looks up to see what, where this is coming from, this thing is standing just, you know, what, not very far, eight to 10 feet away from her. And then it screams and look at the canine uh, screams at her and her dad, both of they just literally just, make you know run for their lives to the car and get in the car and they leave everything behind they get in the car and they're uh the rocks are hitting the car as they're pulling out and then if you'll see the like two two images over uh it's chasing them yeah yeah it's chasing them down the road it chased them it's chasing them down the forest service road screaming at them was was this um I, I missed it was this a southern encounter no this is yellowstone oh yellowstone huh? that's interesting yeah. and uh she it was kind of during the forest there was some big forest fire season and she thinks that this is you know that this guy was a displaced but she absolutely felt like its intention was to kill him you know to kill them i think uh, you know, I think because it was just such a terrifying encounter. They they drove straight to uh, like the ranger station and told the rangers what had happened. Um, and the rangers uh, kind of just absolutely dismissed them and said what you saw was a bear. And they, they, you know, both of them were saying, were, you know, they were shaking violently and they were terrified. And, oh, you saw a bear. And she was like, you know, bears don't throw rocks. <laughs> And they just left. They left everything behind. Like they just left, Gosh. and they they left the park that day, and then they just went. You know, they went home. They didn't. Well, what home. is your what is your opi opinions, uh, Sibylla, and why why the vast difference in the creatures? Are we de dealing with different subspecies? Um, yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I I I think so. I think um, you know some have these uh, more apish figure you know features, and I have. You know, people have told me what I saw was kind of half human and half ape. Um, 
so that comes up a lot. Uh, it seems like more and more uh, people are, are saying they're more human. And I don't know if like before this, people were just afraid to say how human they were. Yeah. I don't know. But some of well, the, a lot I, I of would, those sketches. If I, would have, if I would have seen this, I would have went, I wouldn't even have thought human. Yeah. Um, it's so much like a, a very primitive creature compared to the man. Yes. Oh yeah, that looks like yes. a total yes. human. You know, hairy human. And there's a hairy there's human. another one up there that also uh, comes from Mount Carmel, Illinois, um, and he it was a, a Navy SEAL. Uh, or, I'm sorry, he was a Marine. Uh, yeah, and which one was that? What did it What did it look like? It looks real. It looks really, really apish. It's probably the most. Yeah, keep going. It's probably the most apish one that I've, I've ever done, and it's it's terrifying. This man had a horrific encounter with this thing. Well, I mean, it's not horrific. It's just, in fact, this thing uh, could have killed this man at any time. But there, it's that one right there. It's that one. So look at that. Oh, that's just creepy. Yeah. yeah. And there's not three it has, images. It has like I no get, neck because it. <clears throat> Yeah, and it showed its teeth. Like, so the next image, and look at the scars. Like, this thing is also scarred across its forehead. And then it showed its teeth like that. And then uh, and then the one is the body. So look at that. You can see the skin through. And he said, he said, this was not hair covered. He said there was hairs on the pecs, but I could see wow. the six pack. And that was all skin. Very gorilla-like. Yes, and that's what he said. And so he was checking his trout lines late at night. And he said, you know, from the moment my my feet hit the ground, he said, maybe even before I got out of the vehicle or I was driving there, I just had a bad feeling. Like he said, I, I just I had a really bad feeling the whole way going there. And then when I got there, he said, I just, uh, he said he was, he just was going to do it really quickly. Like get out of the truck, go check the trial line and then get back in the truck. And that's what he did. And then, so he starts his engine and he starts, he puts it in drive and he starts to move. And then this thing steps right out in front of his vehicle. Put put the face back on, Alex. The one where it's okay. just the head. That one, yeah. And then one, the one with his teeth open. Or his teeth showing. Oh, Jeez. So, I know. Can you imagine? And Good he's job. nine that's feet a, tall. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, no thanks. That's, yeah. See, that's why, I don't, that's why I don't pull back the curtain right there. That's it. <laughs> that's the reason. Yeah. That's where... I think I'd um, faint. <laughs> That's why I don't do and research. And how do you unsee that? Yeah, how no, do you unsee that? You, you can't. And it was no. also missing. Uh, it was missing two fingers. It was missing the uh, little finger oh, and the man. ring finger on its hand. Yeah, this guy had obviously been beat up. And it's interesting too is that there's another person uh, in Oregon that when she saw this witness sketch, she said. Uh, she said that she she gave, she had a name for him and she goes that's you know that's him that's exactly what he looks like how did you do this image and I said well that's from a marine in you know Illinois and she was like oh my gosh and so she wondered it was so close to what she saw that she wondered if it was the same creature that had just moved you know from Oregon to mm -hmm. Illinois so so Greg but, you if know, you're listening. Said, uh, Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Just hang on one second, Greg. If you're listening, that's the kind they have at Snowgrove, that that you're going to. Notice. <laughs> so just just thought I'd throw that in there. I'm sorry, Sabella. Go yeah. ahead. No, no. It's a, and he. Uh, I said, why do you think nice. it stepped out in front of the truck? You know, and he said it wanted me to know uh, not to ever come back. I mean, it was very clearly a message. You know, this yeah. is my territory and don't ever come back. He said, and he said, you know what? It could have killed me at any time, but it let me live. And I asked him, uh, I said, did you ever go back? And he said, absolutely not. Okay, next. That yeah. guy's freaking me out. <laughs> this one isn't much nicer. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of in between. I could deal yeah. with this guy. This, this guy? guy I could deal with. I could reason logically with him. But not the other one. And this is a Florida Sasquatch. And interestingly enough, this guy is doing this in a window. Like I he's either seeing his own reflection and doing it. Mm. But screaming. And and uh, this was a kid mm. who was sleeping on the couch. And 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 interestingly enough, there were forest fires going on in the Everglades. So, you know, once again, it, it's uh, possible that this was a displaced Sasquatch. 
Yeah. You know, and angry about it. Yeah. Interesting. All right, next. This one looks like it belongs on Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, this is an yeah. old, old. Are you thinking female. Schultz? <laughs> Are you yeah. thinking Schultz? Okay. And, and she has blue eyes. Gosh. Oh, man. Yeah, what and this is an girl. old, old female. Um, this was in Alabama at a habituation site, and this young man had put a bunch of, it was close to Easter, and he put a bunch of Easter eggs in a, the, the, the ravine. It was kind of like a ravine and the Sasquatch had put a whole bunch of brush over it. So it was, it had become kind of like a cave. And so he had put a bunch of eggs in there uh, the few days before. So he was going to go in and just check to see if something had taken the eggs. And he starts crawling into this space and, this female, uh, I guess she made a vocalization or screamed or made some noise and ran to the back of this thing and then was just huddled in the back, shaking. She was terrified, scared to death. And, uh, it, you know, she didn't have a whole lot of teeth and she was real uh, frail. And uh, and then he felt horrible. He was like, oh, my gosh, you know, I just look at what I've done. And he knew instantly that he had really messed up. So he backs out of there and he starts to leave and she pops out of there and she does some whooping that gets answered uh, by, I guess, the alpha male of the group. And uh, this young man knows that he's in trouble. And it wasn't very long to the male was absolutely mm. like right behind him, trailing him, just feet behind him, popping his teeth and escorted him all the way back to his house. Like he didn't run, he just kept walking, but he really, he literally thought he was going to die. Like at any second, this the male was going to overtake him and kill him. And Super when he got, interesting. Yeah, when he got back to his, got back to his, uh, to his home, he literally just fell into the doorway and uh, was sobbing. Uh, it was yeah, such a terrifying experience. <clears throat> yeah, that's um, that's just such a bizarre looking creature. Yeah, uh, just an old female, and I, I think they, um, you know, obviously they get old and they get feeble, and, he, yeah. you know, I kind of think they felt like uh, they kind of stayed in the area that winter because she probably couldn't travel very well. Interesting. What are your thoughts, Alex, on that one? Besides Charles Schultz, or no, um, Schultz from Hogan's Heroes, God, that's... What goes through your mind when you see that, Alex? Well, it's just interesting to see an actual depiction of like an old one, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because so it's many of them look so middle aged, you know? Yeah. But they have to, there have to be really old ones out there. Yep. Right. And she yeah, had like but... an age spots and uh, wrinkles and. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had lots of. It's pretty amazing. Um, one thing I, I don't think I've ever heard, I've never heard of anybody saying that there was like teeth missing most of them seem to have all their teeth mm -hmm. and this one and looks right. like it's lost some of the canine in you know so the front teeth are the only ones left is that what she right. described that's what he that's what he described, or he described I mean, the, you. yeah that's no. what he described he didn't uh I, I i don't remember i think i asked him if he'd seen molars but he said no i just wow. saw the the three and the two so is this I, is I this what happened is this what happens when you leave a lot of taffy at a gifting site? <laughs> yeah, it could happen. It could happen. Okay, next. Get another one, Alex. You can. What do we got? Is there anyone that really stands out to you? Oh, that, the, go, go, yeah, go back to the left, right? That one. Uh, yeah, go, go back, go back, go back. Go yeah, back. that's Mike Woolley. Yeah, go back to the right. Um, oh, the, this way? Yes, right there. That, yeah, that oh, guy. Yeah. yeah, that guy. Um, this this man, this is a fascinating story. I, and I, I don't know, I might have talked about it on uh, Jim's show, Jim Meyer's show. That's fine. This, yeah, this man, uh, his parents had passed away. You know, I think they'd been in a nursing home for quite some time and they passed away. And no one had been out to their property for a long, you know, years. And he was uh, going out to the property early one morning. It was in a different state. Um, I think this is in Arkansas, and he lived, you know, at least a state of way. 
and he got there early in the morning. The sun was just coming up, and on a, the road was horrific. You know, he should have been in a four-wheel drive, but he was just in his car. And he comes around. He still had his lights on. He comes around the corner, and he sees what he thinks is a little bear in the road. And so he honks his horn, and out of the right side comes this female, and in one step, like one huge step, she is on the road, and she picks up, you know, we pick up our babies, like, and we bring them, you know, to our chest. This creature swung her arm around, you know, kind of like this, swung her arm around and scooped the baby up and threw the baby on her back, and he saw the baby grab her shoulder here and bring its knee, you know, brought its knees up. And he said, and this all happened within like one step she's on the road and she's swooping the child up. And then the next step she's off the road and down into the ravine. And so he stops his car. He's in shock. He's trying to figure out, you know, it happened just in seconds. And he's trying to figure out what did I just see? He stops his car. He opens the door and he's standing right. You know, he's standing right there listening because he's still in shock trying to figure out what was that. And then, um, He's standing there just listening and listening. And then there's this tink that he hears mm. on the uh, top of his car. And he turns around and this male is standing like four feet from behind the bumper of his vehicle. <laughs> and then it screams what? at him. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, it screams at him. And, uh, you know, lets him know you're not going to follow my family, dude. <laughs> Poor guy. So, of course, he gets in his vehicle and he, you know, hauls, you know, hauls out of there. But it's a one way in and one way out, you know. So there's Mm -hmm. he has to come back out. Uh, So he drives like, I don't know, I think he said it drove like maybe 80 or 100 yards. And he stops and he's trying to figure out, okay, how do I get back out of here? Because, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not staying. And uh, then rocks start pelting the car. So then he backs away, you know, more. And then eventually he gets up the courage to, you know, to get out of there. And he just floors it, you know, and he, he gets out of there. And I don't, I never know, knew whether he kept or sold the property, but I, I think he was so terrified he probably sold it. Crazy yeah. story. Crazy. It's amazing. They're, they're, they're amazing. So pick another one, Alex. God. <laughs> oh. Another, another, so I, I love it when you do the multiple expressions. Yeah, it really adds a lot to the. Yeah, and some people don't. You know, some people don't get to see the multiple expressions, but um, yeah. you know, but oh, some cool. people do. This this is a kind of a cute story. Um, there's two images that go with this. This is a young man who is in Georgia, and he's sneaking out of his house to go see his girlfriend. Uh, you know, and it it, it was I, I guess it was. It wasn't that far away from his house, but he he had to walk through cornfields and cross barbed wire fences and things. So he's he's about to cross a road, but he sees a car coming. So he backs up more towards the cornfield so that the lights don't hit him. And he's kind of crouched down there waiting for the light, you know, for the car to go by. And if you click on the next image, you'll kind of see I did a little illustration of that. Yeah. So he's. He's in this cornfield and he hears something walk up behind him and he turns and looks over his shoulder and there's the Sasquatch looking at him like, what in the hell are you doing here, son? <laughs> like it has this look on his face like, what are you doing here? And so he just took off running, ran right into a barbed wire fence. Um, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> and got all cut up and everything, but uh, great story. And I And I think he went to his girlfriend's house and probably was hysterical that's nuts um throw up another one alex is this the fabio of bigfoot (laughs) this is a real human in fact this is one of the first i think i did that was really really human and that's what the guy said yeah um yeah and then this was uh this was this guy was on a snowmobile and he was, uh, he, I guess it was getting late. So instead of going down the snowmobile trails, he was just, he just took off and he was kind of cutting, you know, trailblazing his own way to try to beat, you know, before he got dark. And he, he just came upon this thing. And again, it was kind of look at him like, what are you doing here? Like, why? But he very, very human, 
very human face. That was, I think, one of the very first ones I ever did that had a real human face. And I remember thinking, you know, I was kind of wondering about that. Are we going to see more human faces? And that's yeah, and they're, they're, it, it's amazing when you see them like this, they are completely non scary. I mean, they're just not scary. They're not even, um, I don't know. They just look like they're really smart and very peaceful. But the ones with the big fangs and the teeth, no thanks. Yeah, the ones that are more apish looking. Um, and it yeah. kind of seems to me that in a way they're a little bit more aggressive, maybe. I don't, maybe. So, Alex, how are we doing on time? It looks like we're about to get cut off if we don't wrap up here. Yeah, yeah, but we should uh, we should definitely have you on again. This has been great. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. anytime. Yeah, we want to uh, definitely hear the follow up too on um, that one story yeah, it's with the face. Story, yes. When you get that, when you get the uh, yes. whatever you call it, the morphine face. That just yes. sounds. That's going to kind of bug me now. I know. So I'm going to be thinking and, about and that. And he's very. He's very, uh, he's very intent that we're, I, I, I get the sense that he wants to do that one real soon too. So it'll, it'll probably be in, uh, in the next week. Uh, we'll and he's, he's that. really credible, huh? Super credible. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And Gosh. he really struggled, you know, after he saw, um, after he saw what he saw, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he, he wrote to me, he said this, you know, went through four tours in Iraq and I saw the worst, the worst of the worst and evil of people. And you've seen bloated corpses and bloated children. And I mean, just horrific scenes. Yeah. But he said, yeah, horrific scenes. He said, but nothing, nothing scared him or affected him like this encounter with this thing. He, when he got back in his vehicle, he was dry heaving and uh, shaking so badly he could hardly control his vehicle. I mean, this is a Terrifying. veteran. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we never even got to cover all of the stuff um, I wanted to talk about. You know, with you, you living alone in a cabin for what two yeah. years? Two years? Well, the you know the the in Crittenden it was five years um, oh, at the geez. habituation site, and then I yeah. spent four months four months in my camper in the Cherokee National Forest. Okay, I want to just yeah. talk about that kind of stuff and. It's so tempting that, to go to the art, you know, but it would be fun to just hear those yeah, stories yeah. because yeah. you were selected. You were selected to do something very cool, something we've all thought about. And that was the first time I'd heard yeah. your name, too, you know, that you were selected to basically habituate um, creatures. Um, so, but let's just save that <clears throat> for a whole nother show. <laughs> we'll get you booked again, Alex, get her booked again so we can just do that. And so, um, what do you want to um, tell people? I know you have a you have a podcast. Is it? Is it, it a yeah, podcast? Just a YouTube it's channel. Oh, channel. Just a okay. YouTube channel. Yeah. And so how, I how interview. Uh, just uh, sketching encounters. Okay. It's my sketching. YouTube channel. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. sketching encounters, and uh, you know, I've only done five. I just started the I just started the channel uh, last summer. And, uh, you know, and, and everybody has just been so great. They're like, when are you doing the next one? When are you doing the next oh. one? And it's just that these, you know, these, uh, these encounters, they take, they take a long time because at first I've yeah. got to deal the witness sketches. And then it's like this young man I'm working with right now. I want to do, I want to do illustrate his story. I want, uh, I want people to see what he saw as it was sitting down. I want people <clears throat> to see what he saw as it's coming towards him. I want to see, yeah. what, I want people to see it as it as it's you know when its face did that morph thing and then what it looked like on all fours as it was running away like i, I want i want to illustrate all that so that's what and, i on my channel you know the the witness comes and tells their exact story and then we do you know show the art that we created together alex can you post a link in the show description or in chat or yeah probably the show description would be best mm -hmm. yeah sure and oh, Sibylla you. and Sibylla has agreed to be in Legimate Science. Oh, perfect! And we are looking for the exact right case for that. That we can get into a lot of great detail on her um, forensic work. So yes, we would love to. Yeah. Love so to. anytime you have a anytime you have a, a witness, Doug, that has had 
you know, that really got a good look. Um, okay. You know, I just just consider it done. You know, just uh, put me in touch with them, and I'll go to work. Yeah, sweet. I don't know where you find the time, Sibylla, but that's awesome that you're that you do this and no charge for people. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, most people don't ask for these experiences, so it doesn't seem the right yeah. thing to do to charge them. You know, I mean, I, you know, the Lord takes care of us and takes care of me, and and right now I'm living with my mom, so I can, uh, you know, that's taking care. You know, being with her, being a companion to her. Uh, and I have That's a little so cool. studio here, and I, you know, I, I, I sell my artwork to museums and stuff, and I have a little website with a store on it. And if people want to support, you know, support me, they can just go buy merchandise, and I'd be happy to make stuff for them. Yeah, because that awesome. makes me happy. Um, Alex, can you get that link to it to her little um, her store? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I just added it to the the YouTube description. Oh, great, 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 great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for all the yeah. listeners out there and um, all the thank nice you, comments for making me almost spit my drink out a number of times there with some of the, especially the nudist camp colony <laughs> comment. Oh, my God. Ugh, it's bad. I'm going to turn my it's chair probably off. a good thing. It's probably a good thing I couldn't see all the comments. <laughs> yeah no no yeah it was they were all they were all very fun you know people yeah. are people are just having fun right. and, and yeah, yeah, i think most people in our audience are they all take this subject serious trust me they do there's they a do. lot of better things they could be doing than yeah. sitting sitting here with us on a wednesday night but they choose they chose untold radio so we thank you and thank you for all the super chat donations yeah, and thank you. thank you so much, Sibylla. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. And uh, I guess thank with you. that, we're going to sign off. Take care, everyone. All right. All right thank thanks. you. Bye. I call you up in the middle of the night. Been bothered by dreams, ain't feeling all right. You give me comfort, say just give it some time. By the end of our talk, I'm feeling just fine. You and I will always know. This ain't no ordinary love we got going on I'll pick you up in my 59 Ford We head on down the road until we get bored Just you and me and the sun and the wind If the rain should stop falling we'll head on home again Everybody else can see where we belong Pardon